Dude, it's blue and it's Christmas already. It's not Christmas yet, but in three weeks it will be. Um, something, something. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with these intros. I gotta plan these ahead of time. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream on this fine fourth of December, 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been pretty all right. A little bit chaotic, a little bit stressful, and then I casually got a bit ill on Saturday, so I'm recovering, ish. Um, just like a stomach bug. It's not like really anything that big, but it's just like, yeah, oh, I've been queasy as, uh, and fortunately we're playing the least queasiest game, which let's start it up right about now. Uh, da -da 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 we're playing Tomb Raider 3. I, I haven't brought it on screen yet. Whoops. Whoopsies. Whoops. Let's switch on over. We got sound. Do we have a picture of the title screen? There it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to continue on with Tomb Raider 3, except we're at the end. You may notice that the stream says finale, unless it doesn't on YouTube, in which case, whoops. But it probably will. Uh, in the last stream, uh, we finally acquired all four pieces of the meteorite. The first piece that we got in the Indian jungles. The second piece, which uh, technically... We didn't get in, in Area 51, we got in uh, the other place, but that's a bug. We went to Area 51 in Nevada and wandered into an alien spacecraft. Uh, we went into the uh, South Pacific Islands and uh, fought off some cannibals. And then a guy in a chair fired lightning at us. And then we went to London. And England is already a scary place, so that was fine enough. But we got a meteorite piece as our reward. With all four in hand... We venture to Antarctica to un uh, uncover the mysteries of the meteorite that was found here. Um, this first level is simply titled Antarctica. This is the whole of Antarctica. It doesn't go any further than this level. Um, <laughs> but uh, we've got a uh, we've got three levels to, to deal with um, and uh, and a boss fight level, which is not very long. Uh, and on top of that, there's a bonus level I would like to show at the end. It's not that long, but. Um, all that does add up, so we'll probably be here for a little bit. Not a long bit, but a little bit. Um, we start off just by uh, going around here. There's a... Pretty much there's that little house. We've got the... Oh, we've got the um, the key that we need, and you can see that there's a bit of a long way over there. I think there's actually a way to climb over and something like that, but it's very out of the way, and I'm hoping we're very set. Uh... But yeah, no, I hope you have, you've had a wonderful week. Um, this is... Uh, for reference as well, in this level and the next one, you'll notice that there's a blue bar in the top left. That's Lara's heat. It will go down as you enter the water. It will slowly go back up as you exit the water. Uh, but it does mean that you want to keep your water traveling to a minimum. And it also means they're going to meme on you a ton when it comes to placing items and secrets in the water. Um, which is going to be a little cruel, but... We got to deal with it. I like the way that the particles actually sit on the ground. Do you like that? They've put an effort on these snow particles. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, also, we got Lara's outfit. A lovely... Oh, okay. I should probably be saving a bit more often. Uh, Lara's outfit, which is a lovely orange jacket. And some camo pants. That's so that they don't see her in the snow. And, uh, of course, having the braid just flowing like that. Um, also, yep. Uh, take a shot this stream especially. Uh, but pretty much the entire game so far. If you cannot see... Sorry. If you can't figure out where to go, look to the ceiling. It's always that. There's always a thing on the ceiling. Um, but our main goal right now, just to start off, is uh, we need to... Ooh, a bit close. Uh, we need to get onto the ship. Now we're on the ship. Let's have a save. Just so I've got some progress. Save. There we go. We've got a fun variety of like locations and places you go to in this stream as well. So, out of all the worlds, uh, yeah, this one was a bit, you know, a bit more in line with what I expected. Uh, we're gonna have all these dudes wearing red, running about, arguably, or well, arguably, they're not. There's no argument here. They're gonna just actually shoot at me. Uh, I assume these are researchers, but I'm, again, like, I'm very curious why, day one, these guys are just shooting Lara. I know, you know, she's technically part of another team, but 
what's going on there, so let's press on this button. I mean, well, you probably have the, the idea later. Mm. Actually, no, yeah, why, why are they shooting Lara? You'll, you'll, you'll know the true purpose. Usually that's how the endings of these Tomb Raider games go. You usually, usually know the full purpose of what's going on pretty much at the end of this level. And then you got like a, a journey level or two journey levels uh, in this case. Uh, we've got this relatively loud machine, but that's okay because if you can, uh, I think over here on this side, yeah, there's a little lever just chilling here. Pulling this lever uh, weirdly reveals the floor right here, so, okay. I get very Tomb Raider 2 vibes by going around a, a ship. Fortunately, this one is very small. Um, it feels much larger than it probably is, and I think it's just because it's closed off, but I swear the run... Because we walked from one end of the ship to the other, like, from the outside, and it didn't look like it was that big a, that big a run. There we go. Uh... Yeah, so hopefully I get over this little stomach illness. Um, it's not that bad, but it is just like, oh, you get you get a bit queasy, and then you're just like, oh, that's not fun. Um, but I haven't really felt that bad. I've been like 90%, and 90% is good, so that's our little corridor just to get back to the start, if you ever feel like getting back to the start, but you probably don't want to. Uh, wander over to this side of the ship, and we have a dude. Hi, dude. How you doing? Probably going to take a lot of just random damage over this stream, um, but also remember it's the end of the game, so uh, you know the, the goal is to flex on how many items I don't have to use by the end. Um, but probably in this case, I'll probably use one of my 39 med packs, which I will go nowhere near. So there's not really any risk of really losing this. Um, I don't think this game is particularly. See from down there, I guess. So press this button. And a little boat drops, which is very nice. He can't climb up. There we go. <laughs> um, but I got some things I, I can talk about for this year in particular, um, because we're in the Christmas season. So for reference, uh, right off the bat, uh, for schedule-wise, um, so today is the fourth of December. I will be streaming. Well, this will be the end of this game. Um, I'm going to plan for two streams. Two, mm, probably not as pushing it for length streams for the expansion to Tomb Raider 3. Tomb Raider, the Lost Artifact. Um, and then uh, that will put us right at like, okay, I'll do a stream on the 11th. I'll do a stream on the 18th. The next Monday is Christmas Day. And uh, yeah, you know, you know I'm not going to stream on Christmas Day. So um, there'll be a week off. And then uh, it will be New Year's Day the next Monday. And I will stream on New Year's Day. We'll be back the week after. Um, I hope you, you don't mind as well. I timed this perfectly. The fact that we're in the snowy level for Christmas. Isn't that incredible? I planned this out ages ago. Uh, and by ages ago, I mean... Uh, it seemed alright. <laughs> it seemed very coincidental, so... If we run over to this side, we'll actually see that there's a little hidey hole here, and I don't trust my jumps at all, so you know how <laughs> this is going to be, we always save. Um, also, I don't really know my secrets, but I know that this one was a secret, so there is that. It's got a magnum ammo. Actually, do I have... I still lack the harpoon. I don't think there's ever another opportunity to use the harpoon. Pretty much it serves a purpose in the London level, and that's kind of it, because I don't think really any... Well, I mean, you're, you know, you're not swimming in this level. And, uh, I can't really think of anywhere in, yeah, anywhere in the rest of the game. So, rip the harpoon. I'm not gonna need it, but okay. Uh, now that we've, uh, dropped the boat, um, yeah, I thought this was also a curious one. I might save here as well. Um, there's a little mountain ledge over there. You can kind of see it. And you can definitely see it when I run a bit closer to it. But, uh, it's a very curious, like, jump here. Yeah. Very curious angle. And this is not a secret. I'm just chilling up here. You know, ice pun. But, but uh, yeah, nothing really is going on up here, so. Oh, that draw distance, oh no. <laughs> uh, but we did find uh, rockets. So that's cool. Unless that's grenades, in which case, grenades. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, 
But yeah, uh, I might as well dive into the uh, the things that I played this... Mm, well, <laughs> I'll try and interject with the two games that I particularly played this week. Um, so the first one is Dirt 5. I did mention Dirt 5 a bit last week, uh, so I won't overlap a ton. But Dirt 5 is uh, pretty much, if I had to just describe it on its own, it's a very arcadey racer. It's got a, a very, you know, very responsive you know, control scheme in the sense of it's not really intending to be crazy realistic. You want to go left? Yeah, you'll go left. You know, no risk. The music starts always as you try to ride a vehicle. We're gonna... Oh, we can't go quite around here because there's a little ice bar there. But you can sail the boat. Oh, sail the boat around. I like these, uh, this 993 number on the front. Does that mean something in particular? Maybe. The 2001? Not too sure. Subtract the two, what do you get? 1,008. Alright, sail around the perimeter of the boat. Can't really stack the boat, so... That's pretty alright. And we'll sail through here, where you can clearly see that there definitely was a little ledge with probably stuff in it. Um, and you can't really, like, this is where the ground ends, so unless you want to swim a bit... Probably not the easiest. We've got a guy here to greet us. It's like Disneyland. You ever been to Disneyland and a guy in a red jacket started shooting you? Maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't Disneyland. Uh, we are greeted with a door that has a wooden bar on the front, and we can't really do anything with because we got these you know, these pieces. So Lara immediately just goes, "No." Nah. Uh, I think there is something good down on the water, and I'm going to try my best to try and swim and get it, but you'll see the, the, the problem. Now, you don't immediately die when your cold goes down, but your health does dramatically dip, uh, and it will certainly... Oh. Yeah, 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 you see, oh, you see it in action, there you go. You get, like, a couple more seconds, which is not long enough. Um... That was for rockets, and I know I do want my rockets. I do want them, so I'm gonna try it again. Get out of there, Lara. Get out. Get out. Oh my gosh, you can't grab that ledge. Okay, phew. Okay. <laughs> Burned the medipack just to get some rockets. Worth it. Uh, this door will probably be our, uh, our key for the end of the level. Because um, you can see ish over there. There's a gate. So obviously, well, we've got the the, the boat. You know, gate. Hmm. Okay. So now we'll try and do this whole rest of the level on foot. Because uh, pretty much is. Uh, but yeah, Dirt Five, uh, very arcadey racing game. Um, if I had to describe what it's basically about, it's got a mild story. You are a student under a guy called AJ. AJ is a cool guy, I guess. Um, there's a podcast with two guys on it, and there's a guy called uh, Bruno, and uh, Bruno is an up-and-coming guy who is too good. Uh, he is too good for AJ, then eventually is peer pressured by the podcast to race AJ. AJ then loses, AJ then cries like a baby and retires for some reason, uh, and then uh, Bruno... Well, I guess you try to beat Bruno, and then eventually you do, and then Bruno is like, Oh, I had fun! I'm a normal- Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Dude, this dog knows. This dog knows. Uh, I saved before the rockets, didn't I? Yup. Okay, cool. I'm- I'm glad I- I save very frequently. Uh, bonus points as well. My controller is actually dying on me. Um, if anyone remembers from... Like two years ago because it's not really been that long um maybe two and a half years ago uh i had a very dying controller when i was trying to play earthbound and uh on the first earthbound stream i, re I do remember this the uh the controller died and then it effectively locked the emulator well until i realized that you could unpause it uh but i didn't have the shortcuts bound so uh I don't know, it killed the progress of the stream, and I basically lost that entire stream. Which, well, not, not lost the entire stream, because the stream was there, but I, I did have to recreate the save. Um, fortunately, Sony Music is so mean that I, effectively it's very difficult to actually, you know, play and upload Earthbound to YouTube, so... I gave up on that one. Um, but uh, the dead controller was definitely a bit of a problem. Um, 
since I'm not playing on an emulator, this it's technically going to just keep playing if the controller dies. But I do need to note that, yes, if the controller does die, I'm just going to wander off in some direction. Um, the, it's, it's strange, if I had to say, it's the micro USB connector inside the controller. Um, and on the controller side as well, which is very annoying. Um, is sort of mm, not working ideally. Um, I'm still using an older Xbox One controller for most of the things I do. But I do sort of want to start using another kind of controller. So I'm, I'm looking out for some alternatives. Um, even ones with like some non-standard button layouts just to toy around with them. Um, well, not non-standard, but like, you know what I mean? Like, not the Xbox layout. Just something. Um, especially as well, because if you play like emulated Nintendo 64 games, for example, it's like... I can never really feel quite right pressing um, the... or tilting the analog stick to do what the C buttons are doing. Especially because it's not, you know, it's not right under your thumb, it's now like in a different place, so... If I have a game where it's like, oh, you need to press the C button, but also A needs to be like right there, it's like, oh, I can't really do both. So, I'm looking out for one of those. I'm seeing a lot of, uh, Amazon controllers where it's... I've, from the looks, it looks like there's basically a broken Nintendo 64 controller on the electronics, so they just gut the controller. They, they use the plastic shell and the buttons, and then they basically just put their own, you know things inside and uh it's a usb controlled controller so it's like oh okay sure um which is basically what i need like i don't really need amazing or needs to be used for every single game out there it just needs to be nintendo 64 button layout if it's other trash then okay maybe but using the same chassis is definitely a, a nice um push uh oh boy the closing doors of doom that's what the music was sort of hinting at uh, for some odd reason, this building has the, uh, worst, and it kills Lara very, you know, it's weird, it doesn't make that much of a noise, but, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be in the way of the automatically shutting doors. So, up the stairs we go, and we're in a little bit of a building where there's probably a couple of people. Get them out of the way. Get them out of there. They don't drop health very often, these people. They don't, so... Um, anyway, uh, Dirt 5, uh, it's got a plot. But the way that the game basically works is that you have a laundry list of events. All the events are basically races. The only exception is uh, there's a couple of events... I forgot, I forgot the name of what the kind is, but it's basically you're against a time trial. And there's a couple different time trial ones, but ultimately they're all time trial events, uh, which doesn't really change how you drive. It just means that you're only against yourself and a time. <laughs> so, uh, like all 1998 video games, by the way, Lara just picked up a crowbar. Um, I just thought that's very interesting. She's also wearing orange. Maybe that's a sign. Um, <laughs> I don't have any intention, for, just for reference as well, I don't have any intention to replay uh, Half-Life on stream. I feel like that was one of the, the much better Let's Plays that I did back in the day. Press this button. That, pressing a lot of these buttons, by the way, doesn't do anything. And that's because there's uh, a power outage in this layer. I know, right? You come here and the power is off already. Like, okay, sure. I, I love these windows, by the way. And I love how you're just kind of overlooking like where you were. But, you know, the aesthetic of what you're seeing outside is kind of cool, so... With the crowbar in hand, we now have the means to activate not one, but two doors. And I, f I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, no, no. I wander back out. Um, so, yeah, your laundry list of objectives, but they're all basically races. Now, uh, there's a handful of variety of cars, but they don't particularly control that different. There's definitely some trucks, some... Uh, you know, more, uh, I guess, like, modern rally cars in the sense of they're, um, they're, uh, more like hatchbacks rather than the, the more sedan style of the older cars. But you can still find some sedan style cars, like the Impreza and the, the Lancer Evo 6. The, the Evo 6, <laughs> interesting choice, but yeah. Um, so, but it's, it's alright. It's alright. Um... Think. I 
Yeah, okay, we gotta, we gotta wander around here. Even though it looks like there's a couple of other ways to go, I'm gonna sort of expedite the, uh, the plot of the, well, not the plot, but the direction of the level. So, you had to wander in that direction, only to then wander back up here. Um, well, well I'll, I'll explore the other parts, but just, yeah, if you're mentally mapping the level, think of it in terms of kind of like a, uh, a tree of just like the areas you can go into. Um, currently it's been a very straight line. We're just kind of going back and forth along that tree. So like we started off next to the ship, go into the ship, get the stuff, get the boat. Um, now, yeah, pulling that lever activates the, um, might as well use a med pick, med pack. Uh, activating that lever pulls, opens the door over there. Interestingly, when you use the crowbar, briefly, you might spot that the crowbar drops behind you. Uh, don't do what I did when I was testing my way through this level and not pick up the crowbar again because you will need it because there was another door that looked exactly like it and don't do that as well. Oh my gosh, it's space in there apparently. Wow. I might as well just load. It's quicker than climbing again. Um, yeah, yeah, the cars don't feel crazy different. Um, one other big kind of complaint I've got is the AI is not really fun. Um, I played a lot of the game on medium just because I sort of wanted to blitz through it a bit more. Um, but I found that the AI range from incredibly easy to most of the time they're rubber banding in a alright way, but it is kind of annoying, to sometimes they're actually just very difficult and I'm cheesing them very hard to try and get past. Um, it, it ranges a bit too much. Um, I think the, the most egregious events are the kind of, um, I forgot the name of the kinds of cars, but the ones with the massive wings and you just drive around in a circle going left. Um, and uh, some of those events, most of those events are five laps because it's a bit of, you know, it's, it's not a very long track, but some of them are three and it becomes rather tough to get past the initial, you know, burst of enemies and uh, sort of, uh, cars in front of you and then maintain enough of a lead for them not to rubber band back into you. It's like, when it's three laps, it's too short. And there's a big problem with that uh, for some events in the game where it's just like, some corner is just not very easy to overtake on, and then suddenly they're just zooming through and they, they catch you, so... Yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, also, uh, I, I would like to break from the Dirt 5 to also mention, did you like how we didn't pick up anything in there? Um, that's because... What you're supposed to notice is this diagram here that says fuel supply and has a picture of two green and two red things and sometimes you can spot the snow appears inside the room. Very nice. Oh, it's because the ceiling. Okay. Um, but yeah, what you're supposed to know is that the second and fourth ones uh, have a green symbol next to them. From the bottom. Uh, from the bottom is important. This second and fourth one uh, is your hint to solve a bit of an obscure puzzle, which is if you drop down here, and then we swim our way back up. We climb out. Uh, we're going to be along this path, which basically mirrors that diagram. And you just have to know that that texture relates to just the pattern that you have to open up. Um, so these are our four valves. Oh, look, a 1998 game with valve. You want to open the second and the fourth valves. So this will um, turn on the power. Nothing really bad happens if you turn on the wrong ones, except for the power doesn't turn on. There you go. So with all that, it act oh sorry, it doesn't turn on the power, it opens a door. Which then lets you turn on the power, so very nice, but... Up we go. Um... But yeah, I sort of kind of explained the whole game, basically. You keep doing the events. Um, if you win, you get three tokens, three stars. Collect all the tokens and you get an achievement. It's not really a reward for even doing it. I think you need so many tokens to continue, but there's so many events that it's, you know, okay, sure. Uh, there's 125 events total. Um, it takes, took me, well, the whole thing took me 29 hours, and that's including the four DLCs, which probably doubles the amount of content in the game. But it doesn't exactly add a ton more because most of the DLCs involve the exact same thing as before. It was mostly 
Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Not to talk about dirt for a moment, but uh, wander around this corner, this fun cafeteria, and check you this. Oh, he's dead. Oop. And then he throws up. Now, if you're standing a bit close to that, you do get poison. That's right, we brought back poison. How many worlds do not have poison? I think it's just the London levels, right? So, there's nothing in this facility, but I just know. Ooh. I wonder what happened here. That's why some maps of Antarctica. Just to remind you what Antarctica looks like. Bit of scene setting. Uh, wander back across here. This is technically... Um, a separate area around here. There we go. So with the with the power turned on, we actually are able to activate these. A lot of the switches that I've activated have actually turned on now. Um, but yeah, you would need to have the power on before you can really progress in here. So if you did wander around through here, through the fuel ducts and around over to this side, well, you'd be greeted by you know this room that or this area that you can't go into. Also, we're shooting a lot of dogs. Like, again, I know they're, they're trying to kill me. Lara is a bit, you know, she don't care. She don't care that there's a bunch of dogs. Pew, 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 pew. So, um, but yeah, most, if anything, the entirety of the DLC sort of was the same deal. Now, some of the DLC, actually, all the DLC includes, like, four cars at most. So there's going to be some cars that I played through the main game with that you have to get through DLC. But that's about it. You basically just have a lot of recontextualized events. So all the way in here, we have a key. Very important. This key is the reason why I didn't go back to that previous locked door. Um, you know, the one that had the bar on it wet right from the beginning. Because, uh, near the key. So now we've got both. We've got the crowbar and the key. We've now got the means to walk back. There's a couple of things I want to show around here, though, because, uh, you know, we're done with this side of the level. Just wander out of this door. We're back out. We might as well continue around. Uh, this kind of area from the... From the, uh... From the bit is more like a loop. Watch out for this pit! It doesn't actually go anywhere. It's just a pit. <laughs> a little tiny hole. Um... But it actually loops back around, which is, uh... A little confusing in the grand scheme of things, but... It makes sense. This loops back around to the where the fuel pipe began, so... Not really a ton of progress. Watch down here, because you'll... Well, I guess we won't find it right now, unless maybe I jump. There you go, you might be able to see it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I'll just jump down anyways. The famous uh, dog at the bottom of the chasm. My favorite kind of dog. My favorite! As well as he's also hiding these. I think that's actually grenades. Very neat. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of mostly, most of the events and the DLC includes that, which means that ultimately, from a value perspective, you're getting 29 hours of driving around the same tracks over and over and over again using a variety of cars, but it doesn't exactly force you into them, and yeah, it gets a bit tiring. It does. Um, it's not particularly rewarding either, um, but it's not bad. If you enjoy just kind of driving around, um... You know, you'll enjoy that. Uh, one thing I really dig, I do dig the presentation. It's got a jamming soundtrack. A lot of the, the Dirt numbered games have a jamming soundtrack, so that's cool. Um, this one's no exception. Good on them. Uh, they also do the fun things in the presentation, like how they kind of cut to the chorus when you start, uh, you know, a level. So you're always, you know, vibing as the game's loading, which is very nice. Um, doesn't run the greatest, the game. I wish it ran better. Um, I sort of was forced into using the resolution scaling options that they've got, where it renders at a lower internal resolution and scales up. Um, didn't look that bad, but I am running at 4K. Um, but the, uh, the, the ray tracing, I just was unnoticeable. I did, I couldn't really tell that it was even on. Uh, the performance didn't really drop, but also the 
you know, the reflections look pretty good anyways. So I don't really gain anything from having it. Um, so with this open, you can press this button. Which uh, doesn't do anything because we technically haven't, you know, activated this. Which we use with the key. So we use the gate control key and we open up this gate. Which finally allows us to continue on with the boat. Reminds me a lot of the, um, the, uh... Or the, the uh, Venice levels in Tomb Raider 2. <laughs> Some guy just spawned. I'm just ignoring him. I don't need you. Wander through here. There's probably some goodies up on that ledge. Probably. But. <laughs> we zoom in through. And uh, this is a bit of an icky jump. I'm never the biggest fan of this one. Because you technically are sticking your, your feet in the water, but uh, it's, it's alright, you get there in the end. Climb up here. Up here. Now there's probably uh, some kind of secret with the, um, the original gate, because I know that the level kind of ends around here. Um, that door right at the ship at the beginning of the level. Not 100% sure what opens that up. So someone who knows a lot more about the secrets will go, Oh, there's, there's that thing. How could you not, not realize that? I just didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, make sure as you're wandering around, you don't accidentally go into the uh, the Sarlacc pit that's up here. It's just, it's just a pit. Uh, but yeah, wander around this far side and we'll have completed the first level. Very nice job, very nice. Oh, hi, come in. Make yourself at home. I, I won't be a minute. At home? I've just met a man who may as well have been Brundlefly. Fascinating, isn't it? He was your own employee. He was a molecular biologist. He's been in <laughs> molecular and biologists are not employees. Thanks to this material, his Hox genes were multiplied. Do that, and the complexities of our bodies increase beyond our comprehension. But this is just the fringe of its possibilities we're seeing here. My pal's exposure came from a material impregnated into the meteorite crater. The real capacities lie in its core, which these artifacts you're so attached to will let me access. But you've no control over this. This is not just about avidly spawning mutants. It's an entirely natural acceleration of evolution, a real live laboratory of spurred on life. That's not literally here mutants. Wants to be guinea pigs, multi appendaged or not. Well, that's unfortunate. It's been hit and miss here for too long. Now the timing's spot on. I can't leave it. The Polynesians fled in their ignorance. Darwin's half wit sailors the same, ironically making Darwin himself miss this angle on evolution. But now, I'm here. I have the access, the knowledge, the artifacts. Yes, but you bumped into me in India and sent me to find them for you, bringing me here. Listen to this gibberish. Your perception of good timing is bad. I don't know about that. <laughs> Oof. No, the soup! Oh, it landed soup side up. It's all good. Oh! Larry, should have seen that one coming. Trust the guy with the Finnish flag on his jacket. Did you like how the, the, the bag kind of teleported for a moment? And again there. Oh, down he goes. And down we go. So that's the end of this level, but I, I hope that you caught basically how that uh, <laughs> that plot worked. We are in the RX Tech Mines. Um, so, TLDR, the guy who um, uh, we met at the end of the India uh, levels, who told us about all the other artifacts and stuff, uh, basically it was his goal just to get us to acquire them so he could, you know, speed up evolution, apparently. They do some weird science-y thing, uh, the materials around here. Um, now, in some sort of descent into badness, um, we have encountered a room 
Where, okay, there's a door in front of us. Let's go through the door. Okay, there's a door in front of us. Let's go through the door. There's no door, but we're going to continually go around. And now there's a door in front of us. Let's go through. And now there's a door in front of us. Let's go through. Hang on, wait a minute. How many times am I turning left? No, this is not some non-Euclidean room. This is just a ring where the doors constantly open as you walk forward. Uh, what you have to do is stand around here. So you heard that the third door opened or something like that. Then wander back. That door will still be open. That door was actually the way we came in. Um, it's sort of underneath where it was. And this door will be open, which allows you to continue on. It's, uh, it's a bit of a confusing trek, I'll tell you that. Um, this level is not too bad. It's not too bad. That's all I'll say. Um, it's less confusing, but it does require a bit of, like, upfront. Like, yeah, I hope that you, you spot this one thing. Uh, we've got a bit of a ladder. We'll drop down. And, uh, got some ammo. Very nice. Now, if you spot outside the window, you'll note that there's, a uh, woo! Some walrusy dudes. They breathe that acid like before, uh, but fortunately there are dudes with flamethrowers. The dudes with flamethrowers are our friends, and you don't have to worry about them. But you probably don't want to, like, argue with them either. There's not really much ground to argue with them, so... Keep it, keep it clean. They're your pals. Uh, weirdly, they're your pals. Isn't it weird that everyone up on the surface was like, Oh my gosh, orange jacket. Killer. But, uh, here... Nah, he's cool. He's cool. He's your bro. And you'll find a few of them across this level, so very nice. Uh, welcome to the RX Tech Mines, which consists of three, count them three, uh, minecart sections. We are in the on-rails minecart section of the level. Um, that's right, Croc 2 was not the first one that we played. It has, well, I mean, I guess it was an earlier one that, sorry, it was earlier on, on my channel. But, uh, it was not, uh... Not the oldest game with minecarts. That apparently is this game, and no other game had minecarts. Don't let him spit you, because otherwise that's poison. That's not fun. There you go. Just chilling down here, so. Uh, but yeah, we've got three minecarts. Now, uh, to TLDR which minecarts you need to go to, there is an item from both the first and second minecarts. Sorry, from both this bottom floor minecart and the middle floor minecart. We were on the middle floor. There's one above, but the middle floor is all we need. Although it's a, uh, it's a little less telegraphed. I'm, I'm sort of, the bottom one is a, uh, maybe a little trickier than the middle one. But we'll get there. So, the way these minecarts work is that you have a wrench, you can swing, and you probably need to hit a switch every single time you do it. Uh, you'll also need to make sure you duck, and uh, there's a break. If you hold down the uh, square button on the PlayStation controller. Because um, there's a lot of dead ends like that, as you can see. Um, but there's also hills like this. And uh, if you're going fast, you need to go fast in order to go over some gaps. But you don't want to go fast to go around corners. Although it doesn't look like there's any corners here. Maybe there's one right at the bottom. Actually, it looks like it's just going to end. Okay, so... <laughs> No luck, we, we've just entered the minecart without needing to break at all, but um, yeah, effectively treat it as uh, three sections, and they're not, the sections aren't too long, but uh, just know that there are, I guess, three sections to this level. So starting with the bottom floor, we're going, um, we'll spot that there's a bit of a track over there. I'm actually curious what's down here, because I didn't even go down here for the first time. It, I think... I mean, we've got a ladder there. It's probably hints at some kind of secret because no way would you be going through all this on foot. It's a bit too steep at some point. Oh, oh, hold on. Wait, my eyes. I saw it. Look at that little cheeky... Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> never, mind, never mind. I thought there was a cheeky little spot. I'm curious what you get out of here because that's clearly just the way to continue. So... Hmm. Oh well. Can't fully explain it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Ultimately, I think Dirt 5 is kind of mm, mid-game. Which is uh, probably not where they want it to be. They probably want it to be a bit more iconic. Um, and it's not really any fault... Oh, it did crash a few times. 
it, it kept crashing in like weird places. It would sometimes fail to start up. It would sometimes crash, um, you know, in the menu just randomly. It would crash sometimes when it tabbed out. Uh, it would crash just as I entered the main menu. Um, it never crashed in a race, and I never lost progress. But it did crash often enough that it's like, huh, okay. Um, oh, it's also got a Trackmania style mode, and there's a couple of moments in the career, in all the DLC careers even, where it sort of gets you to do a time trial on the Trackmania track. Um, it's a little bit more engaging than driving through the same real race courses again and again, but the Trackmania tracks are not really special. They don't feel quite really unique enough to stand out in my eyes. Down into the descent of the deep we go. Uh, where you hear this wonderful noise. I'm sorry, there's a wonderful noise here. Cool, wonderful noise. As long as nothing jumps out at me. Ah! <laughs> Alright, these big fellas, these are the really Odelios. Get them with a shotgun and uh, don't let them hug you too much. They take about five shotgun blasts, that's pretty much how they go. Um, but they're a bit trickier if you're going to take them with pistols, so... I think this is basically where you would use the shotgun. There doesn't seem to be any better enemy. Um... Yeah, just watch out, because this whole area is, uh, brimming with them. Also, I just want to add, uh, there's this incredibly... You saw the, you saw the gap, it, it spawns up. You can't use flares... Uh, while you're crouching. You have to sort of hold on to the one that you're still holding on to. And uh, as we crawl over here, it's like, oh, it's the whole way I was just in, but now even louder. It spawns one of these walrus traps on top of me. Very nice. And uh, you can see I passed by um, uh, some shotgun ammo, but there's a rocket over here. So very nice. Uh, it doesn't keep going, but uh, your flare only lasts so long, and then you can really not see so I'm sort of going to have to guess where the thing is. I think I saw Lara react to that, so good enough. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit dark. Can't use the flares again, but uh, you got the flash. And then you got to note that this walrus guy isn't just chilling right here. This is 100% how you look for walrus eye. Is he chilling out of here? Where do you go? Oh. Nope. That's a dead one. Where did he go? We'll never know. Um. But yeah, other than that, I played a bit of like the community maps for the Trackmania custom mode. And uh, oh, he's just chilling right there. I like how it's like evolution, but sped up, and it's like, bro, like... You created man-made horrors beyond our comprehension. Uh, so I think that's a ladder, and we're just on the other side of here, so okay. We got the ladder, we got a ladder, all good. Oh, I should climb a bit across. Um... Yeah, it's it's not. Dirt Five is probably not the worst game for a sale price, but it is not particularly special. Um, and it sort of comes in this era where like Dirt Two existed and kind of did it all a bit better and a bit more distinctly. Um, I think this game has a bit of an identity crisis, and uh, you know maybe they should they should go back to the drawing board in places. But there's there's some bits that are pretty alright. So. Um, yeah, and it's not even that it's like, oh, it's not like traditional rally. It's more just like, it's not incredible. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So this is a way to go back to the beginning, which we've going to promptly ignore for a hot moment. Open the door. I'm going to keep crawling, but through some metal, metal rooms we continue. But yeah, so the other game I played this week, I played uh, Disney's Hercules on the PS1, a 1997 game developed by Eurocom. Um, it's a 2D platformer with some 3D elements in it, including uh, three stages where you crash bandicoot run towards the camera, but it's still using a bunch of sprites, a bunch of 2D sprites. 
Uh, I think the sprites are all drawn by some Disney animators, so nice. Keeps the art style very nice. Um, it It's a bit short of a game, I would like to just also note. Uh, someone's going to be like, this is my childhood game, how dare you tear it a new one. But uh, legit, it was like, it's very short. It took me like an hour and a half to like just wrap my head around and then beat on normal diff- Oh, hi there. You're supposed to press the button when you come in. I'm having a fun time getting them. Oh, oh no. How long was it since I saved? Oh, I should have saved more frequently. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I apologize for not saving for such a long time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and double time. We're gonna go ultra quick because I was like, oh, I haven't even shot like any of the freaking walruses. Oh, that's that's my complacency getting me. So yell at me. Just ask me to save more often, please. The worst part is, well, it's like, what do you mean? It's the last stream. It's, well, do it for the DLC. Do it for the, the DLC expansion, dude. I can't say. I don't even think the word DLC. Sorry, the word expansion anymore. I just eternally think DLC, which is a bit of a shame because. I mean, that's, that's how you know my age, but also, like, the kinds of games that I played. I never really got too many expansions back when they were expansions and not DLC. Um, there definitely existed some. I had my Spore Creepy and Cute Parts Pack expansion. Uh, but, you know, I was mostly a console guy for the longest time, and there weren't many expansions on the, on the console. But they did exist. Um, but yeah, Hercules, it's, yeah, it's very short. It consists of 10 levels, and to briefly explain how it works, you do this, like, tutorial level where, um, your, uh, you know, you, you get your sword down, you do that, like, um, kind of tutorial bit, um, and then, uh, the second level involves running through more tutorial bits, it's, a uh, behind the, the, the view running level, um, then we have two more levels. One is the scene in the movie where you rescue the the lady. It's been a, I've not seen Hercules in like two decades. I don't remember much about it. I'm sorry. Someone's like, oh, what do you mean? It's like an actual like Greek, you know, person's name again. I, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, there's a centaur, and uh, you go through the level, and it's a bit cruel. It's got these like weird bits where uh, you can move. For oh my gosh, <laughs> I just I just see the freaking the shadow there. I jumped. The Meg. Oh, <laughs> I I just saw the shit, dude, dude. Oh my gosh. The, the <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be like internally jump scared like that, and just like the flickering lights and a silhouette kicking in. Oh my gosh. Oh, that got me. Cause he wasn't in that spot last time. He certainly wasn't there. You can't see anything. It's just impossible to see anything while I'm doing this. Like, I know there was a ladder over here, but... Um... But yeah, you save it from the centaur, but yeah, the level's got some weird bits where you gotta walk, f you know, forward and back from the camera in these predetermined spots. But, uh... Yeah, it really throws you off, those, those parts. Um... It's also got, like, some... A lot of birds, and the birds are very annoying. I, I would just constantly take damage from... Uh, the birds in this game, because it's like, the the jumping is a little weird. There's no bottomless pits in the game, but the jumping is a little weird where I can't exactly jump and then swing my, my sword quite right. Uh, there's also some power-ups you get in the game, but, um, yeah, they all have sort of weirdly contextual use, and then you lose all your power-ups and your health buffs uh, between levels. So it's like, well, you might as well burn them, or, you know, use them as you can, but... Some of them, I don't know, like, there's one which is like a, a whooshy swirly effect, but it takes ages. When you tap the button, and it's like a third of a second before you actually attack, and you can get cancelled, you can get someone can, like, hit you while you're trying to do your swirly attack. It doesn't even do more damage, it's just a, a different swing, so... I don't know, it didn't really click in my head, uh, the, the bonus power-ups. <laughs> Blendo complains about other games. <laughs> That's pretty much the stream. Um... Alright, I'm gonna take this guy on. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Oh, 
I love how it's like a typical mutant thing to have your spine coming out of your body. Like, that's, you know, if you're still human somewhat, that would be a very delicate part of your body. And it's just like, oh, it's just there. Like, literally, all you can, all you have to do is just, like, stick a fork in it and you'll probably die, you know? Uh, oh, I've come from... No, 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 this is fine. I was like, did I come from the wrong, the wrong order? But nah, it's, it's all good. Uh, we got a little, um... <laughs> glorified fishing rod. I mean, I, I know it's like a winch, I know. Um, what you gotta do is swim down and spot that the, uh, crank. Do this. The winch crank, is that what they call it? The winch starter. It starts winches. Uh, it sort of dropped off. And then we can climb out and then we're done here. Um, but yeah, uh, so the other thing with that third level of, of Hercules is that it ends in a boss that's, like, I don't know, as, oh my gosh. As someone who hasn't watched the film in a long time, it took me a bit to go, oh, like, I gotta jump on him specifically when he's doing his looking around attack, or animation. And he only does that in a very particular spot on the field, and he doesn't exactly do it if you don't stand in the right spot when he's in the right location. Enough trial and error, you'll get there. But when I first played this, I, it just didn't spot. It didn't come clean to me that that was the case. I did see him looking around, but I didn't quite know where you had to jump on him to capitalize on that. So I didn't think I had to jump at him. And then I was like, okay, well, attacking him is not doing anything. Oh my gosh, hi there again. I, I didn't get this guy again. There you go. So many dudes, bro. So many dudes. Push the button, hit the button. Um, but yeah, I don't want to say like, oh, Disney's uh, Hercules is such a hard game. Because after that point, it's weirdly easy. We've got another level involving the city. I call it the, the Big Olive. And uh, it's a bit more straightforward. Those bits where you walk forward and back on is bad. And there's actually some set piece moments where you uh, do some things like... Um, jumping up there seems maybe a bit fruitful, but... I'm not 100% sure even how you get up there. Like, it sort of looks like it comes from another part of the level, because that's where a minecart is. Maybe that actually is it. Maybe it is just literally another part of the level where the minecart is. So, and we got the winch starter, so that's all that matters. Let's hop in the minecart. And continue on our merry way. Uh, but yeah, no, the fourth level's got some bits in it. I actually did like it a fair bit. It's got some fun secrets as well, like, um, yeah, doing some leaps of faith, just continuing a pattern. Um, alright, this is a bit where you gotta, you gotta break, because if you don't, uh, yeah, La Lara sort of stacks, and, uh, the death of a minecart means the death of Lara in this game, so, your minecarts are precious. It felt like there was meant to be, like, a minecart mechanic in the first game, because, um, you know, because it ends in the Atla Mines. You still get, yeah... Um, there's some bits where it's like you have to break, but not too hard. Otherwise, you have no speed for a jump afterwards. This one's okay, because it doesn't really go anywhere. Oh. There we go, we're all good. This looks like I'm going down an alternating path, but it's really just another... Uh, there's a crystal just here. Like, there's nothing really. You'll see that it joins up and there it is. Right, here we go, here we go. Whoa! We're done. <laughs> There's not really any that you really have to break for there. I think it was one, so... Alright, well that's one minecart. Two to go. <laughs> Let's go up the ramp. And uh, into the second minecart. Which is uh, just there. So. Um, yeah, no, I like that fourth level a bit. Um, it does end abruptly. It doesn't actually end in a, in a boss fight. But it does have some bits that you can boss fight around. Uh, the fifth level then enters this strange part of the game where in the movie i think there's a montage where hercules is saving the day and he goes to fight the hydra now i know the hydra you slash his head spawns new heads got it uh, eventually you slash the hydra enough that he dies and you don't have to think about it so that's what i mean you got to be going fast enough to get over that pit this one highlights exactly that you got you got to get speed to go over a pit and then as you wheel around here, Lara sort of leans a bit. It's not fast enough to tip her, but you'll see she's leaning. And then here, she definitely leans a fair bit. And then you got to do a jump. So, 
Look at that, this one tutorializes the whole minecart section. And then we gotta stop, and uh... <laughs> Thank you, flamethrower man, for saving the day. As long as you didn't, you, oh, you didn't turn off the, you didn't turn off the safety drills. Melt the drills, man. What are these drills even for? Like, realistically, what is, what is here that requires these? It's like a very, like, short time to run past. It's very tense, but you can, you can get past it. Uh, I think you gotta go down there, but I think you can also jump past here. We've got a little tiny, little tiny gap crawl through. Um, so level 5 in Hercules is just the the um, the um Hydra. Like, it's just that. So I was like, oh, okay, it's a quick freebie level. Level 6, you just fight the Medusa. In this really weird fight where you have to take damage from ceiling, like, debris. She'll just knock down the ceiling. I have no idea how you dodge it. Uh... On the very, very hard difficulty, this actually becomes a very big problem because you take more damage and there's nowhere that I know of that you can actually dodge that. So it's a bit of a crapshoot whether you even beat the game at that point. Um, then you enter level 7. Level 7 is another um, running level, which is curious. Um, so you run through the city uh, to run up to a... Um, uh, to, a, I guess it's a, it's a titan? It's a very big guy. Very big lad. Um, now this part, by the way, there's just like this descent that you do here, and also you will eternally keep taking damage. So if we go through here... Oh, hi there! Who are you? Big yeah, true. Maybe it's not as bad for this guy. Do you think these guys smell in any way? Uh, or rather, can they smell, first of all? And then, uh... Probably not. Who needs a nose when you're in icy land? I like his little hidey hole. It doesn't even have anything in here. Very lame. Zero out of ten living space right there. Um, yeah, we've just got to find a way to go down. Uh, when I was practicing, I went down the, uh, the forceful way. Here, it's not that bad. Although, Lara seems to continually slip on... The grabbing, so, uh... Let's just observe around, try and find... I think... There might be a plot. Yeah, a bit of a slide. A bit of a drop. Now you can see this bit. This is a, a... A actually rather crafty way of doing this bit. So, um, you can see that there's a little... Ledge you can climb into. First of all. Let's climb down a little bit. Also, I, I would like to comment, Lara is constantly like breathing out a little mist. Uh, I think that's a very nice touch. A little fun little touch. Um, so you do the seventh level, you're running through the, um, the, uh, oop. <laughs> walrus guy chilling in. They're all walruses at this point. These guys take more like shotgun ammo than you'd really expect. And then he poisoned me anyways. Dang it, I was trying to get all the way here. Without needing it. Dang it. Um... But, uh... But the, um... Also... Is that really a dead... That was really a dead end. You gotta be killing me. Killing me? You gotta be kidding me, wal walrus lad. Person going for 100% kills. Yes! A, a guy to kill. Alright, so here's the cool part. So you can see that there's like a bit of a drop. So we're gonna shimmy our way over. And you can kind of spot that there's actually a bit of a like a means to like drop down and then grab. Oh! Lara, you meant to grab the next ledge. It's very weirdly precise. Like, I wouldn't expect it to be as precise as it actually is. Um, so we'll give it another go. Um, but uh, then, okay, so level 8 isn't then a side-scrolling shoot-em-up bit? You're on the, the Pegasus, and you fly around, you, you swing your sword. You're not actually shooting, unless you have the power-ups. Um, then level 9 is another Crash Bandicoot-style run through the level. This time you're in um, the Underworld. And then, uh, 
the final level is a boss fight against Hades. But interestingly, um, yeah, it's ten levels, and levels one, three, and four are like proper levels, as in places you can go to and explore and uh, some platforming challenges. All the other ones, like three of them are boss fights, and all the other ones are... Walrus boy. Um, all the other ones are like these much shorter auto runny style levels or boss fights. Um, and there's not a lot of real challenges that they throw at you in those levels. They've got plenty of checkpoints and plenty of lives to keep you going through those. I find that the other, like, you know, the regular platforming levels to be much trickier. Um, and they're all front stacked. They're all right at the beginning of the game. So it's like, where's the difficulty here? And the difficulty is the Medusa doing the attack you can't dodge. There's nothing down the very bottom of this pit, by the way. Uh, you might have observed that there was a third ledge that you could grab across. And this is the one that you would actually need to go. So we climb across, and you'll spot that there's a way to climb out over here. So this is where we go. This is where we end up. And then we got a cheap shot walrus. I don't think there's anything you can do to dodge this guy. He is just here, and he's gonna he's gonna skid out of the way. The jerk. We got another flamethrower guy. Hopefully he can make quick work of these fellas. Get him! Get him! There you go, very, very nice. Um, and ultimately that was it! It was like, oh, the game kind of ends there. Now, there's a little bit of retro achievements shenanigans if, uh, if you want to go, um, to get the, like, all the coins or all the, the collectibles, but weirdly, most of the collectibles respawn when you die, but the achievements sort of don't care. And neither does the game, to be honest. The game is perfectly fine awarding you for collecting all four pots if you collected the same pot four times. I... it's just... it's just like that. I don't know. Um... Dude, imagine thinking that, like, this is the ultimate life form and it's just like... Bro with no legs. You got him, you got him, you got him. Yeah! Be a bit careful with that, bro. Very nice. Um, I think, is there something in the water? Hopefully there's not something in the water. There's water at the bottom of the ocean. Under the water, carry the water. Okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I picked up a, uh, another crowbar. Th I thought you'd like another one. You think Lara would have held onto the one from the previous level, but, uh, no, not really. Uh, this is fun, by the way. There's literally, like, no pixel gap. It's just literally a ledge. You can see it by the texture, and that's it. <laughs> and the way that the lighting's kind of bouncing off in a bit of a weird way. Ultimately, though, is Hercules on the PS1 that bad a game? Well, it's not really that bad, but it is certainly a bit of a rough one for the value proposition if you're, you, you were to buy it. Um, I guess it's on Steam, so uh, yeah, you could actually buy this version of the game. Press this button, and we basically open a door to get out of here, because we need to get out of here in some way. Um, yeah, it, it's not it's not really that bad a game, but uh, certainly I was expecting a lot more out of it. It's... Um, shallow is my, maybe not the term, but it's like, it's very straightforward, and then cuts short, and it's like, oh, okay. Um... And it's weird as well, given that the other contemporary games are a bit more modern feeling. This one also, it, one very strange aspect is the way that you save the game. It's, it's got a password system. If you collect all four jars in a level, uh, they will reveal a password when you finish the level. Uh, I believe the passwords are pretty set, like as in this is the password that goes to level two. This is the password that goes to level three. Uh, the lives you've currently got, don't care. Uh, all your items, well, you lose them between levels anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Um, and then also, it prompts you if you want to save. Now, if you didn't get all the pots, then you don't get to save. Um, or get a password, really, so you're a bit stuffed both ways. Oh, dang it. Because you do gotta 
jump on these ledges in order to get out of here. Um, but given that it was 10 levels, and I don't know, your odds of getting all the pots is like a third of the chance. I only save twice when I played the game. Um, and you also get a continue. There's, there's a, there's, I, I had one singular continue that I could leverage when I got up to a certain point. Um, but it's, a. Uh, it's weirdly short. Like, I'm, I was just really not expecting it. I can't get over it. Um, and I guess that's a general rule of like, okay, game length. For reference, this game, that's currently taking me five streams to play through, and I know how to play through this game, came out the year after. Uh, Tomb Raider 2 is probably a more direct example. Now, granted, 3D platformer, bigger budget probably. You know, there's a lot of reasons, but even then, the other kinds of licensed games around that time, I think A Bug's Life is probably a bit more uh, emblematic of one. Um, and that one's got a fair bit of content. That one takes a bit longer. The levels aren't, like, straightforward and jokes sometimes. Just like this. Just like all these little screw drills. These remind me of, uh, while I'm on the subject of licensed games, remember at the beginning of Toy Story 2? That's a fun sound effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They introduce this thing, and you're like, oh, what a strange machine. And then you climb up this ladder. Drum roll for the uh, dramatic irony. That's right, it's a very narrow hallway where you just have to dodge, like, three of them. Or two of them. Only two. Thank you, game. They, they they were looking out for me. They went, ah, we only need two of these. Uh, but yeah, so those are both of the games I played through this week. I sort of binged a lot of Dirt 5, so even though I sort of don't have a ton to say, I still said 29 hours and I played most of that this week. So, that one's on me. I get to play Dirt 5 for 20, 29 hours and then say it was kind of average and what's the point? <laughs> um... I love how, like, high the ascent is after, you know, that, that giant pit of going down. Because that's the kind of hilarious part, is that, like, now that we've got the crowbar, we need to somehow have passageway that goes all the way back to the beginning. Oh, hi there. I was not expecting another enemy right there, but sure, okay, we'll go for another cheap shot. Very nice. Very, very nice. Am I even getting him? I still love that Lara never needs to reload. Like, ever. It's, it's, it's never gonna happen. Never ever will there be a Tomb Raider game where Lara has to reload. So you slide down this hill, uh, which... It's like, oh, okay, there's a little hill. But, uh... It's just a little bit of a... A little bit of foresight, I guess, to view... The next, well, the, the original Minecraft. It's not Minecraft? Minecart. It's not the next minecart, it's the one that we took to get here, so. Fortunately, all these minecart sections don't stop at multiple places, so if you do, like, accidentally miss something, somehow, um, no, you, don't, you don't really have to re replay too much minecart. This one's probably a bit more involved, though. I do remember this one had a very weird jump. Rickety, rickety. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. So it's got to jump, pull the brakes. Oh, snap. <laughs> I missed the switch. All right, let's have another crack at that. Um, but yeah, I'd like to do just like a brief retrospective on the year in general, I guess. Um, so in terms of the, the channel and all this stuff, um, we sort of hit this weird rut, uh, with, um, not rut, how do I phrase this? Like every year I, I, I'm, I'm getting, you know, more and more engagement is probably the, the biggest thing, like, I care about. It's like, you know, you can watch the stream VODs or all that stuff, you know, whatever you want, however you want, how much you want, it's all fine. Um, don't be pressured into actually watching stuff if you're not, like, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, like, legit, like, if you don't got much time, it's fine, don't, don't worry about it. Oh, duck. Duck again. Um, 
But I do appreciate that um, for, for some of my more recent VODs, I definitely had a much longer view time average. That's pretty neat. Uh, I also feel like I've played some games that I think a lot of people do really, really like. Um, I think uh, the Magic School Bus one, weirdly, had a lot of views. Um, and I, I also really hope that the um, that whole month was kind of interesting. I do sort of want to try it again. Uh, that month of just like, here's some one-offs of just like random games from my childhood that I would never really play in, well, <laughs> I, I kind of played the other three in full. I, I The FIFA one, it was just, uh, this is FIFA. Uh, but uh, the other three, I sort of showed off most of what you could do there. Let's head inside this building. We gotta turn on the lights. It's a bit dark, ain't it? Hey, cheap shot. Did I really turn on the lights just to get shown that there's another walrus guy? I would not want to be part walrus. It just doesn't seem very convenient. I'm trying to think, like, if you could be, like, part animal something, what would you be? Walrus doesn't really spring to mind. I think a lot of people usually cheap out and they go like part bird because then you get wings. And then they're like, oh, which bird? And it's like, you know, all of them. Bird. Uh, I don't think there's even anything in this room, so. Just here for the looks. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Before I get on the minecart, whoops. Don't get on the minecart just yet. Let's, uh, let's head down the stairs for a bit. On the middle floor, you probably saw it right away, but there was this, uh, barred off door. This is what the crowbar is for, so you need the crowbar at least to open this, and you'll need the winch starter for what we would need after the third minecart. In here is a, uh, Tesla battery. You might say, isn't that just like a, reg a regular battery? And I go, no. It powers Teslas. It's special, and you must pay me royalties for it. And, uh... Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed doing the, um, the kind of random one-off games uh, in the middle of the year and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I do feel like, uh, you know, especially I'm playing a bunch of games where it's like... I think I'm just finishing pretty much all the ones that I've played in the past. I'm not really running into that many games that I haven't played already on this channel, so... There'll be a bunch of new ones. Um, Round and round and round we go. Whoop. I got another drill up here as well. Um, so I think in total I played properly, well not properly, but like mostly through like 12 games and I don't know if that's counting Evacuate and I don't think it was actually, so it's not really any mystery in how to get around here, so that's all, all cool, all good. Uh, so up here we've got, oh you can see there's a Wonderful item just there. Um, but yeah, no, I'm still enjoying what I'm doing, and uh, I would gladly still continue it on for next year, uh, even though, yeah, it's it's like three years running. Um, I feel like some people, I've, I've always had some people ask, it's like, oh, you know, like, you want to become like an internet entertainer, and it's like, eh, no, nah, I just do it for fun. I like chatting to myself in some way, and I like thinking about these topics and discussing them, and... Uh, when, when someone, you know, goes like, oh, you know, that topic? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. So, pop the winch starter in here, and this will move the platform. Does it actually move it, or do it? Oh, it doesn't move it yet because of the battery. <laughs> Haven't put the battery in. Battery goes down here. So, with the winch starter and the lead acid battery, uh, maybe that's not what's in your Teslas. Um, the thing below us moves down, um, significantly down. And this allows you to swim down because uh, it's blocking your way before. This part I kind of hate because you just have to wander your way down, find an open hole, swim through it, swim up, climb out, and hopefully you did not get too cold. And rinse and repeat like four times because you've got to keep descending into these little tiny air, ho uh, air pockets that I guess, yeah, sure, it's got air, but, like, w where's the heat coming from? Is, is Lara just like, ah, yes, I'm, I'm just drying off up here? There's no way you would dry up here. You're, you're encapsulated in ice. Uh, 
All right, swim down a bit more. We're going to try and get under the actual thing itself. Which, uh... Whoop of the ground. Oh! That's okay. They're also topping you off with, um... Some health. So, so even if you are taking a bit of damage, it's just like, yeah, it's fine. Um... Yeah, no, I, I, I'm definitely enjoying doing, doing this still, and I am definitely still, you know, I'm up for next year. I still got a, a, a good handful of games I'd like to get to, and, um, I'm in this weird point where I've probably got a bunch of sequels. Like, just, a lot of games that I played, or have played in some kind, and I haven't exactly played all their sequels and things like that on stream. And, uh, the sequels are in, in line with, uh, what the game is about, so... I swim up through here. Oh. There we go. Another big health for a big person. Alright, we're almost at the end. So, at the bottom here, it did look like a bit of a long swim. Um, and that's because we went past a little, you know, avenue. And you'll see why I didn't go down that avenue right away. Which is, if you swim up here, it's a bit of a long swim up, so... That's why I should go to the air pocket first. Also, you are just legitimately gonna take damage here. There's like, no way you get through that without taking damage. Climb up some steps. Hello there, Mr. Flamethrower guy. Oh, he's just chilling up there. Hello. Um... In terms of, I guess, the world and the th uh, things around us, I guess 2023 is a relatively normal... Well, it's, I, I, I don't even think any year is a normal year un d unless you narrow it down to a specific set of things. Uh, in terms of video games, I guess it's been a fairly normal year and nothing's really weirdly happened around that. But I would definitely say... That, Hi there. How are you doing? Um, I would definitely say that gaming trends are certainly going in this weird uh, collapse kind of area of, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing the, uh, inevitable endpoint of games as a service games. Um, there's something, oh, ooh, cutting that one a bit fine, cutting that one a bit fine. Um, oh, no, did I shoot the flamethrower guy? Okay, we gotta commit, we gotta commit. He can't get me. He's up there, I'm down here. Hey, there we go, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, flamethrower guy, I'm sorry. He doesn't even drop the flamethrower. It's too attached. He can't. He can't get rid of it. So this is a, such a weird jump, ain't it? There you go. Get him out of here. <laughs> what even is this? Is this just a <laughs> what? It's just a wall. Weird. Okay. Um, yeah, there's things like, um, I didn't even, one, I, I found out the other day that Harmonix got bought by Epic Games like two years ago. I might have mentioned it on stream, but I forgot about it because I haven't seen anything out of it. And now Harmonix had d done a very brief rhythm game that appeared in Fortnite for a hot moment. So, okay, sure, that's what they're doing. Uh, also, I found out that various services like Mixer and, um... Actually, I think it's not, sorry, not Mixer, Fuser, sorry. Mixer is the, uh, the Facebook streaming platform. Fuser is the game by Harmonix that, um, just, it's dead. They shut the servers off, or rather they're about to in a couple of weeks, and the game can't be bought anymore, and whatever content they ever made, uh, they can't do it anymore, and that whole idea is just thrown out, out the window. And it's such a shame, because there's some neat things with it, and it's, a uh, piece of work someone created and it existed purely for three and a bit years just like I keep mentioning that Avengers game that shut down this year uh, there's probably a ton of other ones and someone probably has a list of the games as a service you know graveyard this whole list of games that are just unavailable now I keep you know I always mention Dark Spore even though I probably would never care that much to actually play Dark Spore but like it's probably just health or something on there. Maybe there is a secret? Maybe. So, oh. Yeah, I could totally do this. I could totally do this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like someone probably has a list out there because I am 
deeply saddened by how many games are now very bound to online. It's it's one thing if your game has you know a component that's based on the online. It's then another thing if mm, people can reverse you know, the online components, or at least like write a wrapper around it and then it's fine. So like if it's DRM or a multiplayer component, sometimes people can work around that. Once you get to the point of it's kind of the whole game, like we could, it's not impossible to ever recreate, um, you know, the networking components of games when you don't have a master server, um, by just effectively writing your own master server. That's how we're doing Nintendo Wi-Fi games from, you know, the past all this stuff, but like, it makes me very sad to just keep seeing games dying off like this, and just, they're gone forever, no one will ever know what Fuser was, and uh, and life has to continue on. In we go, we are finally at the end of the RX Tech Mines, and I did not find any secrets, so rip me. Uh, we are in the final proper level, which is the Lost City of Tinos. Um, this is the, uh, effectively, you know, the Hanging Gardens, the Atlantis, uh, part of the game where we start getting into the hardest challenges of this game, and definitely, they're tricky. So welcome to the city, here it is, it's a whole city. Um, it gives me a very Tomb Raider 1 vibe, I guess, because the, um, the, um, the, oh, where does Tomb Raider 1 take place at the beginning? The Himalayans? Just like those mountains. It's kind of curious and interesting, so... Uh, we got a few places to look at, but, um, yeah, if I had to break down this level, I would basically say it's, uh... Three parts, again. It's this kind of beginning part, and once we get through that gate, then you're basically set. Uh, you'll see a bunch of things around, but... Uh, pretty much this whole beginning part is just wandering around and picking keys and doing stuff. Uh, also, yes, the crowbar is... Uh, oh, the crowbar didn't even drop in the last level because you only need to use it once. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's interesting that they, you know, gave you two doors that need to be opened with the same tool. So it's like, oh, okay, I'll give you the tool twice. Why not just give me a separate key for, like, that one? So, let's wander around in here. This looks like it's a pit, but it's really just, like, a way to look down. Very, very briefly, but, um, it makes more sense in a hot moment. Because... Oh, gate on my right. You can't even tell. Uh, it's closed. And now, it's open. I think if we wander around as well, we can see some some things, such as this gate is closed. And uh, this is, uh, this is, yeah, you can see there's a little ledge out there. And there's a very fun jump right here. So, I'm doing my best to get there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I do hate games dying off, so that's my one trend I really, really hate, of the, hate out of the year. Uh, in terms of music and things like that, there's been a few releases from artists I especially love and follow a ton, so there's things like that. But there's also, uh, have I actually, I don't think I've really listened to anything brand new, like from an artist I've never heard of, that's like, ooh, ooh, this is pretty good. I think it's just because I haven't really gone out of my way to listen to a bunch of new stuff now. Um, just this year, it's not really a long-term thing, but it's just, oh, there you go, very nice, um, but I do want to listen to some more stuff, that being said, there was a new Peter Gabriel album that came out, sort of, um, on, uh, Friday, uh, definitely would give it a listen, it's great, it's good, um, very broody, uh, very moody, it's got some good vibes, uh, in here we have, uh, a key, I would never trust a key that looks like this, would you, this is the Uli key, I think it's got like two eyes on it. It looks it looks like a tool album art. Just, what is this? What is going on here? Um, but yeah, that was that Stephen Wilson album from this year. I really liked the Squid album. Um, there was another one that's off the top of my head that I'm like, oh yeah, good release. Um, all comes to my mind later. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely had a good like exploration and, and finding some new music and things like that but yeah it's just um yeah I, I, I need to go out of my way to listen to more stuff um in terms of the tech world I guess technically we are oh wait sorry <laughs> I was like in the tech world it's a pretty normal year because the crypto mining boom is sort of gone uh, also just as a tell uh there is no more thermal anymore 
the, the room is hot enough. So it's not snowing. Lara's not missing out of her breath anymore. We're normal temperature. After descending this far deep. I know. Uh, pop the key in here. And we finally open the door to our right. Nah, it's the gate. <laughs> it's the gate. I gotcha. I gotcha. It was the gate. Um... This kind of room makes me feel like there should have been an enemy in here. There's not going to be an enemy for a little bit. This whole beginning area is just like, put key in thing, put switch, open, you know. It's just doing things in the right order. But there's nothing really um, spectacular about it. Which is uh, weird to say for the last level, because uh, I will eternally note the, um, the second to last level in Tomb Raider 1 is very insane. And even the last level is... Still a bit more involved as a level. Um, this uh, switch opens this gate, which actually leads us back to where we were. So just note. Um, yes, peer your eyes out here. If you remembered, this was where the little ledge was. And you're actually going to need to go out here because there's a switch. I was wandering around for a bit not knowing that there was a switch there. This, uh... <laughs> it was a switch, I guess. Maybe there's two things you gotta do, but weird? Weird that didn't do the thing that you wanted? I don't know. Let's slide down here. Where we're at. A little bottom room. It does look like a ceiling or something would come and kill me, but uh... Nah. We just pull another door or another switch. This actually turns on a ladder there. Uh, combined with the switch above and opens this door. So now we can finally wander through and... Uh... Witness probably one of the weirdest puzzles. I think the way I've seen this one described is that there is an actual, like, bit of a, I don't know, it's not really lore, but like, some kind of mythos about the correct, like, the, you know, the hierarchy of life. So all of these have four symbols, although really the ones on the sides are both the same each time. Uh, man is always on the top. And then there's like something down below and there's a down arrow uh, next to everything. So the gist that I think I saw someone describe it as is that this is effectively, is this an accurate representation of the hierarchy of life? Now, man's always on top, then uh, animals and plants underneath that. And the answer is yes. So I press that button. Are birds above fish? Well, I guess, yeah, because birds are literally higher than fish. Are plants higher than animals? Nope. Are fish higher than birds? Nope. Which is, at least that's a contradiction of the two before. And are fish, high, sorry, are birds higher than plants? Yes. Hit one, two, and five. The gate below opens. It's a, uh, it's a puzzle. You just have to spot it. It's just, just a puzzle. Um, so with that, we've now entered the second part of the level. It's pretty straightforward, first part. Uh, where we get into the, um, the bit that people really, really hate about this level. Wasps. They will... Not eternally, but definitely for a very, very long time spawn out of that hole. I think 20 of them spawn out of each hole. Every single time. Uh, spot that there's a glowing platform there. Keep that in mind. I might try and figure out how to get there, but... You sort of have to ignore the wasps. That's kind of the only way to get around this, so... I've got this broken bridge, and unfortunately you can't exactly climb across, but you can. Jump over to this little spot that's got the green crystal. Um, so, yeah, in the world of technology, yeah, I was going to say, ah, uh, you know, uh, GPU prices are normalizing, uh, crypto is going away. Crypto is also normalizing, I think, is probably a fair way of putting it. Um, it's not exactly going away, but it is definitely like, ah, uh, people are not buying GPUs anymore. The ASICs. Just buy an ASIC. If you really care about crypto, you actually use the dedicated hardware that just absolutely spams it and does a good job at it. It does burn your power bill a fair bit more than the GPU does, but it also just does the job so much quicker that it's worth it in the end. And, uh, yeah. Now, I, yeah, what's the way of getting over there? Are these wasps going to highlight another invisible platform next to me, or...? Oh, he's behind me! Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Alright, oh my gosh, my nose is very itchy. This is not a byproduct of the stomach bug, although it could be. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just having to peer around. It doesn't exactly look like I can stand on other parts. If I jump over here, am I going to slide down? Oh, oh. Well, I'm very going to slide down now. I don't think there's anything on the ground. Let's just say that. It, the ground is... It's not lava, but it's close. Um... I mean, I'm already on this side. Oh, wait, hold on, did you see that? No, that's just the wall tape. That looks like it's a platform over there, but I can't really tell. I don't think it is, so... Alright, well, we're gonna drop down and ignore another secret. You know how it do be. Uh, okay, let's get the heck out of here before the wasps come at me. Get out of there. I love how they glow green as well. There's something very otherworldly about them. Almost as if there's some kind of ancient, you know, alien rock that's uh, mutating them into some sort of advanced life form. Hold on, wait a minute. Also, this is an ancient empire of some kind. I guess, chilling here. They got the Easter Island heads. Um... So, there's probably more to it. I've, I've not read into it as much. Uh, somehow that guy managed to run away from us and get all the way in here so quickly. Um, now, are you ready for this? We have saved the grenade launcher for the best moment. These guys will fling uh, lightning things, laser things. Okay, well... That was that. That was all the rockets. I hope you appreciated it. When I say rockets, I meant grenades. Fortunately, I hope that- oh, and they blow up as well. Just for, just for good measure. We're at that point in the game. We need to have the enemies blow up. They actually- they don't take as much damage as you would expect, as well. They look like they're absolutely massive, but... And they are, but like... Yeah, no, they don't... They're pretty, they're pretty weak in the grand scheme of things, so... Um, also, I don't think we're going to come across any walruses anymore. I, like, all those researchers and, you know, mutated people are kind of gone. But now we're going to have these, like, larger lads. Uh, also, you, <laughs> you will enjoy these things. They will set you on fire, which means you are kind of stuffed if you touch them. Now, there's a couple of uh, directions that you can go in. I think if you wander over in this direction... Cool. Yes, if you wander in this direction, we'll turn up into this kind of chamber. This is now the final part of the level, but there's actually one thing I want to do over here. Um, pretty much, there are... I don't know why, there's like a... there's four masks that we'll need to pick up in order to put into slots, which will allow us to exit the level, as well as also there's that ladder into somewhere I have never been before. Is there an easy way to get in there, or...? Is there a ladder over here? No? No, interesting. I'm curious where that hole is. It's not needed, but yeah. Um, interestingly, along with the four masks, there's also just another lever that just has a switch that opens a gate. <laughs> you just need to also do that one. It's kind of weird that that's also there. Um, oh my gosh, twisty, twisty, turny corridor. Nothing here. Strange. Um, the, uh, the path to getting the extra thing is down here. Uh, but yeah, no, hopefully, um, yeah, yeah, in terms of the crypto stuff, that's gone. Um, but, uh, obviously 2023 is by far the year of AI. I think certainly if, if all the AI stuff was not as big before, it is incredibly massive now. It's like all the growth of the actual technology itself. There was a story I read just the other day of like how, um, to synthesize like crystals, um, like, the, I think it's like we have discovered 35 stable crystals in the past, like, decade normally. Um, also, all these guys are really going to come at me, so I should probably get something that I can, like, um, run and gun with. Maybe... Might as well get the... Oh, well, I've got one shotgun shot, so... That's it. That was my shotgun shot. 
Uh, let's go Deagle. I think Deagle is, is gonna be my love. You gotta fight three of these guys. Uh, sometimes it's nice enough and you only have to fight one at a time, but this one wasn't and they all kind of came at me. Everyone likes a good gladiatorial arena. Let's see, were there any goodies chilling where they were hiding? Oh, there's a switch. That's how you know. That's how you know it was a goodie. What did that exactly reveal? I don't know. Probably, I think there's a gate to leave here that you would have needed that for. Or there's a gate for all three. Nah, it wasn't for this one. Gotta have the, uh, the menu music again. I haven't really been talking about this game much, so I might as well... Oh. I don't know, there is a bonus level at the end, so uh, I think I've got time to maybe ugh, highlight it all at the very end. Um, but yeah, oh, dude, all this AI growth is, like, very interesting. That that crystal sink, yeah, so it's like, I think they've found, like, 35,000 crystals in the past decade, and then suddenly, like, just lop, you know, lob some training data at it, and uh, the AI model figured out 800,000 uh, supposedly stable crystals that we have never discovered in like a year and um oh yeah there's a ladder over there oh, i should check out the ladder first because i know that this is a bit of a weird ledge um and of those it's like researchers have independently confirmed 729 of them so it's like it's on a roll it's like we would have never found those without this and it's like yeah like you know trust but verify we try to confirm that it's legit but like, that's crazy. There's other kinds of use cases as well, obviously, all the, the, the art stuff and the personal assistance stuff, which, um, you know, there, there's some terrifying aspects to, you know, all this stuff happening so quickly. Uh, there's like, what do we do as a, as a society when occupations keep getting replaced by AI? And it's like, you know, <laughs> you know no, one, no one is quite answering it, but the big businesses are currently calling all the shots. It's a bit of that. Um, but just in terms of like what we're achieving with the tech, how much we're able to progress and improve with um, this kind of stuff, even somewhat on the same hardware that we had before, like there wasn't really a big GPU release this year for gaming or other kinds of workloads. It was mostly, you know, fleshing out the lower ends of the stack. Um, and the uh, RTX A... Is it? No, the RTX 6000 ADA. Which is just a 4090, it's not really doing anything that fancy, so... Crawl through here, we're in another room, and this room I kind of hate, by the way. Because, uh... Um... You sort of have to just know, like, a series of switches. Um... It looks like you could go in, like, multiple directions. Um... What you want to do is you want to land on this ledge, and you can sort of spot the first switch right there. You're going to need basically two switches on this upper floor in order to make a safe passageway that leads down. So I think that flipped up like... I want to say this might have flipped up just that ledge there. Bit of a jump, it looks a bit weird, but trust me it was working. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I, I'm very, you know, cautiously optimistic about this AI stuff. Because um, I think it's neat and I researched... A bit of this in uh, at uni. I did a um, some stuff on a uh, AlphaGo, and uh, yeah, I totally was like, you know, we weren't really there yet in 2018. But it's like the theory works really nicely, and technology is getting scarily good. In 2018, I was like, look at these like Ryzen, you know, desktop processors. This was back when like Ryzen 1000 was out, and I was like, this is a big shock to like Intel. This is probably like something pretty cool and um i think in that same year it's like we also had the um the uh the turing cards so the actual rtx launch so it's like oh look at like the fact that we have like the moment i saw that and i wish i was streaming at the at that time because uh, i would have totally been like hey look at my comments from 2018 um but take my word for it this is how i felt i saw that and i went ooh, like that's the most interesting part about, like, Turing. It's not necessarily the ray tracing implementation right now, although definitely I'm I'm very looking forward to when ray tracing is uh, better. Um, some people go, oh, but it hurts frame rate. It's like, yeah, but, like, when it's at that point, it's good enough to play 
you know, games with really, really great looking graphics. It'll be cool. It's not really there yet, and, and uh, I don't know, the, the, we're kind of dealing with this state where, like, you know, we're five years down the line of RTX, and I'm still not sold. I'm not sold on, like, using it as a graphics um, enhancer. Um, not that it can't, it's that no one makes better graphics yet with the ray tracing. It's kind of, kind of strange. I hate the wasp, I hate the wasp. I really hate the wasp. I could do without him. Uh, fortunately, I guess it's only this level. There's a little pool here. Not really too sure what it's doing. It's just, it's just a pool. Um. But yeah, I, like, for, for gaming, the graphics not as much. We've definitely seen over the past two years, uh, DLSS and, uh, AMD's competitor FSR really going to, to bouts over, um, you know, frame generation and all that stuff, um, and, and upscaling. Um, that switch, by the way, activated the platform that's directly above me. In and out, I hate the wasp. Um, but I feel like DLSS and all that stuff is a little bit of a stopgap. I don't think we're exactly there for, you know, it definitely helps bring the overall performance up when the visual fidelity is pushing incredibly hard and somewhat, you know, uh, what's the term? Diminishing returns? It's not a, it's not exactly, oh, oh, no, 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 oh, no, dang it, did I save when I hit the ground or no, 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 I oh, saved down here, dang it, there you go, that's another blender didn't save moment, uh, that one was just a bad jump. <laughs> That's just a very bad jump. Um, but yeah, I like I, I'm not convinced that it's actually that great for gaming right now. But the fact that like for five years, unless you bought a GTX sixteen sixty super or something, um, so at least for three years, but definitely four or five years, we've got some real neat tech that a lot of people's computers have. Like even like laptops with you know RTX you know, graphics cards, it's like, I, I think what's really interesting about all of this is that, like, we can have use cases that are accelerated by not only ray tracing coprocessors, but also tensor processors, which is, is something that, like, you know, anytime you ever have a, um, like, I don't know, I, here's my, as my Blendo mentions Hardware Unboxed. I've never heard Hardware Unboxed particularly talk about the tensors, and I think it's just because it is a bit of a black box and we don't particularly know how much the tensors get involved. Arguably, maybe it doesn't, but I would totally say, based on the things that I've, you know, I've, I've, I've researched and things like that, it's like, well, you know, tensors are exactly what makes the neural net stuff go crazy fast, which is why I think there's a very prime spot for NVIDIA to really push their cards for, um, know various AI workloads and then suddenly it's like oh look at that and like can you do this on AMD no or something like that um, I think that will probably be the the way that they push for this is it necessarily gaming no but I think if there's a way they can make it advertisable or at least marketable to the gaming crowd in some way um, you know that would be a, a, a huge win for Nvidia and the fact that like oh it's on hardware that everyone has. Unfortunately, there's things like you know the LSS3, which only supports uh, the RTX 4000 GPUs because of the optical flow um, coprocessors. I love how this drops as well, so it's just like oh what. <laughs> um, I think you then gotta yeah you then gotta wander all the way back up because confusingly you have to unpull a switch in order to continue on this run. It's very strange and it's not very well telegraph because you pull the switches and you just can't see anything and you're constantly getting harassed by these uh wasps like i legit want to be done with the wasps uh but um yeah no I, I i think it's it's super cool tech that is in a lot of people's devices and arguably it could be on the next coming switch version whenever that comes out whoop uh, we've all long rumored the Switch, which uh, came out in March of 2017, aka 
six and nine six years and nine months ago it's it's been ages and we're still rocking it and it's i mean you know consoles have definitely lasted longer before the original game boy is probably the most noteworthy how on earth did that last that long it went nine years the game boy before it had and it was it was cheap to begin with the game boy and then it had nine years and then there was a game boy color which basically was an up clocked you know game boy it was mostly the same um which also meant it was still cheap very nice uh so drop down here oh my gosh these wasps these wasps i swear is now fusing with wall okay are we done no because they will never be done uh don't go one step further because there is a gap um should be able to do a bit of a running jump here and get onto this ledge where I will then proceed to run away from the wasp. There we go. Get him out of there. Very nice. Pulls the switch. And we'll get there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. General AI stuff is, is cool and interesting. And as long as uh, I think people have... Uh, one, an open mind, and two, fairly alright morals, and don't freaking abuse AI to just, you know, like, don't, don't rip on people's likenesses, or that kind of stuff, like, you know, if someone asks you to stop with their kind of work, or they don't want their work used in AI, you know, fully respect that. Um, I think I cheated, I think I act, not just now, but like, I think when I practice this, I actually really cheated, because, um, you do this, oh, Because that's not quite the ledge. I did like a cheeky thing where I somehow like swung out and swung back in. I'm going to try and try and demonstrate what was in my head. That. That was the cheeky jump. Which is, is so cheeky. Because I don't really think you're meant to nail that jump. But sure. Oh, I did it. I managed to recreate it. I would recommend the same. Because I don't know what platforms you're going to pull. There's a ledge over there. I'm like, oh my gosh. So all the way over here, we have another switch. We've been in this room for like 10 minutes, I'll tell you that. Pull the switch. And, uh... The door opens. Now, uh, we could either attempt to jump back or just take the fall. I'm thinking we take the fall and just heal it. Because, uh, yeah, I was like, mm, we're going to cut it very fine, but we'll do it. And it's a bit of a drop, but... It's faster than actually climbing around here. Okay, in we go. Into another room where you'll proceed to be greeted by more wasps, more bees. And as well, you'll also be greeted by um, the everyone's favorite, the, um, the minotaurs in the corridors. They're not really minotaurs, they got like a tail on their head. In claws, I guess. Gotta watch out for the lasers. Oh my gosh. But they're definitely, you know, pretty serious enemies in the sense of, well, they got a lot of attacks. Also, they're setting themselves up as a bit of a precursor for what you're gonna, you know, experience coming up. Um... But overall, I, I don't know, I'm very hopeful that, uh, you know, I think this is actually where you need to continue, so I'm just going to keep wandering around and keep looking at this room for a little bit. And hopefully these wasps don't give me too much of a hassle. Um, yeah, uh, no, yeah, I, I'm very hopeful that a lot of tech is, is going to get real cool in the next... Can you, can you not climb up in here because of the shallow water, really? Huh. Very strange. Um, I'm hopeful a lot of tech gets really cool. We got um, the hopeful release of new GPUs next year. I guess nothing on CPUs this year. Although we did have flash prices absolutely plummet. And they've sort of bounced back a little bit. So it's not as cheap as they once were, but I don't think it's that bad. Um, it's just that, yeah, they were crazy cheap earlier in the year. So if you got anything back then, oh... Good deals, good savings. Oh, hi there. How are you doing? Um, 
that, that meant like, you know, real cheap PBR5, which was the big problem of adopting it that early. Um, I still think, like, when AMD released uh, Zen 4 and it was DD DDR5 only, DDR5 wasn't quite at that price that, like, anyone would recommend it. And now we're at this weird point where um, if you're going ultra cheap, not ultra cheap, but I shouldn't say cheap, but, like, if you're going very budget for your, for your builds, you know, Zen 3 is still a very good option. Um, Intel's all those CPUs don't exactly get that much cheaper, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but they do have DDR4 motherboards and DDR4 options, so cheap DDR4 memory is very nice. But DDR5 ain't too bad, and uh, some of the cheaper processors that you can find out there um, do the job pretty nicely. And uh, benefit a little bit, so if the price is right, it'd actually be pretty okay. Um, and of course, you know, basically everyone's got an SSD in their computer that's pretty much their only drive now. We're at this point where, yeah, you don't really recommend hard drives anymore. Um, like, unless you need more than, uh, pretty much more than four terabytes, I think it's the thing. There we go, that's why I didn't want to leave right away. There's another key here. You needed to get another key. If you, if you left before I grabbed the other key, whoops, go back, go get that key. You need the key. Me and the key. Um, but yeah, no, I, like, uh, yeah, oh, for reference, my hard drives finally came in, the remaining two that I haven't had in order to make the video of me setting up the NAS, so, um, I'm a little worried of, uh, how old and how crap my video really is, given that it's, but that, oh my gosh, you've gotta be kidding me, you gotta be kidding me. This is going to be pain, because I can't really pause while on the ladder. Oh, because oh, cause otherwise that happens, where I tab out. Okay, phew. Okay, phew. I should have just reached over and hit escape on the keyboard. So after climbing up here, we have, uh, weirdly, um, a lever, which just goes back. These wasps are the end of me, I swear. And, uh, you can immediately use the key on this, so probably highlights that you needed to use the key. This reveals something underneath, so without that key, you won't be able to really proceed. Here is a wonderful ray of light. You stand in the light, you burn. It's very hot. But we also have four spots for masks here. If we head up these stairs, you'll, uh, notice that we're back up here, where, uh, we went up the stairs before, and we were in this, this area. So... In this path, we have, a uh, basically a crossroad. Uh, we have four chambers. Each chamber represents, uh, an element, I guess. So this is the Earth Chamber, so to speak. Um, the Earth Chamber, well, they all consist of some kind of puzzle. The Earth Chamber consists of your ability to wing the quicksand that I have missed so dearly. I, <laughs> from the beginning of the game, but... It's not too bad, but just make sure you make your way uh, anti-clockwise around this room. You should be alright. Even though there's a ledge there, that's not really... You don't need to get there. Well, I might as well speed up having to climb across the rest of these, because now you can do a bit of a wacky jump. To continue on. But you need to keep going, because there's uh, an actual ledge over there. You can tell it's the Earth Chamber, because they've got a picture of mountains on the wall. So... But other than that, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to technology next year. Um, yeah, we had a disappointing 14th gen Intel release. Uh, I think we knew for a while that it would be um, a bit of a nothing release, just because uh, we knew that um, Media Lake was basically cancelled, and it's like, oh, what are they going to do? And the answer is, well, oh, Raptor Lake again. It's Raptor Lake refresh, so, sure. Um, and yeah, no new Zen 4 CPUs. We did have the 7800 X3D, though, so... There is that. Uh, the mixed CCD uh, AMD CPUs have a bit of work to go. We're, it's it's kind of weird, those ones, because uh, you know we we've been we've been having some nice you know uh, Windows is iron and, and Linux is ironing out their their uh, thread schedulers because now people are using mixed uh, core architecture. Um, you know, processes 
all the Lycrim Raptor like for Intel have the PNE cores. Um, Apple's got the also PNE cores. Uh, and with this one, it's like, well, now we've got cache cores and non cache cores that actually clock a little higher. Um, this is a little fun area as well, just this like, part over here. I hate the wasps though. I'm just gonna eternally hate the wasps. You're gonna keep hearing them forever as well. Here we go. We got the urn right here. Now, yeah, every single one of these uh, chambers ends in, uh, or yeah, ends in getting a little mask. It looks like an urn, but it's really a mask. Uh, this one crumbles immediately after you start picking this up. So uh, you gotta watch out, or also the rocks will get you. And then you sort of have to platform past the rocks. <laughs> it's a bit funky. It's a bit, it is a very bit funky, especially dealing with the camera shakes. Uh, also, uh, they've casually uh, done the thing where they um, collapse the, the world around you. So you really can't tell, but the moment you go past that ledge, you're basically on a massive drop. Uh, so good way to bait the player. Don't worry as well. They did it on both sides, so you have to do a jump here. And the shaky camera does not help. It, it really doesn't help. Shake, ooh. Okay, drop down. Uh, all the quicksand is gone, as it is. Drop down, because these rocks are gonna try and crush you. And then, I'm gonna save here, because I don't like jumping from this spot. I don't think you actually need to run up, but you do need a bit of a... Oh. Maybe a little bit of a run up would help. Um, early in the stream, I wasn't saving, you know, I was wasting a lot of progress. That, I literally saved right before I failed to jump. That is efficiency right there. Um, hop over onto the right on this ledge. And then let the rock crush you because you didn't turn quite right. Nice. Very, very nice. Um, do that again once more with feeling there we go and we're all good uh, this area will keep rocking but we've got the mask so climb down this ladder uh, every single one of these chambers also weirdly exits into this underlying kind of passageway that leads just right out the bottom every single one of them so it looks like you're kind of delving like further into something that you know looks a little weird and crazy but it's just like no it's just a way to get back and they force you this way uh but yeah no i'm looking forward to to next year um i think there'll be some cool tech good music hopefully some good games we'll see um so i think you gotta stand here and this gate every time you go through this gate you'll spot i'll keep going through this gate so let's put the mask on the pedestal. And uh, let's continue on with three more masks above. And probably kill a bunch of wasps, because oh my gosh, wasps. I should do a counter of how many wasps I killed. Because it's all just this level as well. It's incredible, so. Uh, again, watch the, the light, you don't want to touch it. Uh, we're gonna make our way downtown, heading left, there we go. Welcome to the wind maze. The interesting thing about the wind maze is you have to follow the wind, and by follow the wind I mean don't go the way that I'm going, I'm just kind of exploring a bit more. But you'll hear the wind, and uh, you'll sometimes see Lara's hair blow in a certain direction, and that's indicating that the wind is coming from the other direction, so go that other direction. Am I getting attacked? Oh, these wasps aren't here. Look at all this diamond in the walls. Too bad my, uh, Lara doesn't have an iron pick. She can't mine it. No iron pick. I used to think for the longest time that gold picks were just like low durability iron picks. And then I was very wrong. I think the like stone picks in terms of the uh, things that they can mine as well. Oh my gosh. They put wasps in the maze. I actually like to think that they can break out of their like... Little cocoons. 
Yeah, this one is uh, basically just a maze, though. There's nothing really to it. It's, well, the, it was the secret to the puzzle, which I mentioned, and now I am incredibly lost, and I can't hear the, well, how can I be incredibly lost if I can wander my way back to the beginning? Could there be a secret in here? Maybe, but... Uh, oh, did I wander right past the, the wind? Keep listening out. Do we see more wind? There you go, that's an example. You wanna go this away. It's a cool puzzle, I like it though. I hit a dead end. I was following the wind unless there was a yeah, there was another path. There you go. Oh. Hey, that's not the wind, that's just health. Oh, I'll find my way out of here eventually. If you follow the left wall, you'll probably find it. Maybe it's, uh, this way. Okay. Um, yeah. I hope, uh, you all have also had a very good year. And, uh, if things haven't gone well, hopefully they go better the next year. And if they have gone well, hopefully they go even better anyways the next year. Just keep getting better. You know? Things like that. Uh... Oh, 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 this room, this room. So it's like, oh, there's this weird spiky thing. How strange. So then you step here, and uh, one starts coming at you. So you jump over to the other side, only to notice it's rolling back at you. And then you start going up a little more. And then another one comes at you. I want to activate that one, dang it. <laughs> okay, well, we're not activating it. And here we go, we got another mask. And the exit's actually just here, so. But very nice, very, very nice stuff. That's a weird exit, but okay, sure. For a second I was like, oh, did I fail to grab a ledge? Nah, we're good. We're good, we're good. Swim on out. You're gonna hear like the other chambers nearby constantly. And then, uh, oh, this platform looks familiar, and this gate looks familiar. That's right, we're back out here again. I do love that it all links up. It's very cool. Like, you just don't have to think about it. Activate that, we have another pedestal turned around. And another two wasps ready to get shot by me. Get him, get him, get him. There we go. Okay, so two pedestals left, two masks to go. We're nearly there. We are very nearly there. So, to give a bit of a, a um, uh, I guess a post-mortem of this game, I've actually really enjoyed playing it again. I feel like it actually makes a lot more sense now that I've really, really stopped and thought about it and I'm not like binging all these games. Because there's a lot of cool things like this, where, one, you've got a camera queue, you're in the Temple of Fire, Light a flare. Ooh. Ooh. Very, very neat. Uh, we have a bunch of platforms in front of us. And uh, unfortunately, the perspective doesn't work anymore. Whoops. Um, we have a bunch of platforms in front of us. And the goal is you need to jump onto the correct platforms. If you jump on the wrong ones, they light on fire. So what we need to do is jump on that one on the left. Jump double over to this one. Jump double over to the one in front. And then, uh, weirdly, it's the plat- oh, gosh. Yeah, it's a little hot, a little, little, little hot there. A little bit hot. <laughs> we'll try it again. Once more with feeling. Um, but yeah, no, I've really enjoyed this one. I actually think that the atmosphere in this one really, really works. I think there's something a little, um, classic, but definitely there's a, there's a l engine and a hardware limitation um, around when the first game and the second game, to some degree, came out. Uh, definitely there's things in the second game that aren't in the first game, like skyboxes and vehicles and Lara's hair flowing in the wind. Uh, also, this, uh, platform turns on, like... R yeah, okay. You don't get a lot of time on that one. You don't get a lot of time there, so... Um, this one, though, I feel like the quality of 
its presentation is a lot stronger and i think it's just because the lighting is a lot moodier and a lot more accurate in some way like there's a lot more colored lighting going on there's a lot more darker sections requiring those flares that properly feels dark and gloomy and blue or orange lit lara wears a different outfit for all the environments she goes to and there's definitely a um a good fun balance of all the environments uh and it doesn't feel oh my gosh I'm, I'm, ter I'm getting worse by the second. It doesn't feel like there's really a bad level in this game. I think every single level is weirdly strong, um, except for maybe one of the London levels. I did really hate the um, the subway level. I, I could do without that one. Um, but generally, like, most of them work out pretty well. I think my brain had smushed too much of this game together, so I had completely forgotten really most of the ending of the game. I, I pretty much only remembered the fact that you went to um, Antarctica and that whole beginning kind of part of the ship and that was it. I didn't even remember, you know, like this part, which also nice bait. Very nice. Uh, this part I hate, okay? I, I say there's no bad levels, but there's definitely bad parts of the levels. Um, maybe someone would say that's harsh, but uh, so these statues are blowing fire, you need to jump three times, jump back, grab the ledge, don't get singed, crawl left, uh, doing the, the invisible platform thing again, you gotta wait for this thing. Okay. I'm gonna turn around and jump right. There we go. Flip around, I pulled the lever. We're gonna kinda awkwardly do it again. Okay, so... Jump here, turn right, drop down, there we go. Pull up. Long jump, there we go. I, I, I had enough attempts at that one before that I'm like, okay. Pulling the switch just disables this. That's it, that's all it does. And just as a bait, they put that there. And there's, the ceiling is really weird, so you can't even, like, jump onto the mask. You're gonna get really thrown off by the swinging urn. You just have to kind of walk next to it commits again the mask like that so oh hi no 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 I want to leave I want to leave there you go jeez for a second I thought you were gonna lock me in um oh this area looks familiar with this gate and the wasp on the outside again terrorizing me very nice very cool Okay, another pedestal, another mask onto the pedestal. Hey, excuse me, I'm putting masks in here. Now my guns are smoking. Get it, the mask, get it. <laughs> oh, that's, I, I'm getting super lame, my jokes get super lame. They're not even jokes anymore, it's just like, you, you just mentioned the mask. What's so funny about it? I know, I know. Um, so with that, we've got one more chamber left with one more mask. Obviously, the last remaining element is water. And good luck. We basically need to drop down past the spinny death traps of doom. This reminds me of Shadow Man. We have the spinny death traps of doom and some other levels. Which I still need to get to. I know, I know, I know. I'm really copping it, aren't I? I'm really copping it. Oh, we'll get, we'll get past that. Um, but yeah, on top of that, I feel like this game is like, it's got the right pacing. Every world is roughly about the same uh, in terms of length and scale. And uh, there's definitely like something kind of climactic about a boss encounter at the end of each of the worlds, even if the... Uh, maybe the Area 51 doesn't have a boss encounter, but it definitely builds up into something quite dramatic, so that's fun. Uh, you've got four pathways here. The top pathway, uh, you don't want to go to. You want to go to the left one first. It has a lever. And some air. And the ability to, well, I guess you always have the ability to heal. Because I keep touching the blades and I'm going to constantly cop it. There's not much level, there's not much game left, to be honest, so don't worry about, uh, burning through all the, the health packs. 
because bonus points the final boss is very very uh cruel when it when it comes to the amount of damage he deals now we'll go over to the right door which we've now activated uh this well this little hatch you can swim up and you can swim up all the way to the surface where we then reveal another room full of more rotating blades of doom with a wonderful shadow down there um i think we need to go through here i like how that didn't start moving for a bit but sure uh right down here and you'll find another lever are you getting a bit of ptsd from the um from the uh the swimming parts of london oh okay let's get past this there we go nice and easy let's go for a heal let's go for a save as well while i'm at it just to just to top off um, but yeah, if there's one thing, I wish this game had more volcanoes. Uh, as a general, I want more games with volcanoes vibe, and this doesn't really have a volcano in it. Um, it happens, I know, but, uh, I think it's cool that when volcanoes exist. Look at that, more Uzi ammo. Uh, it's a little awkward to swim down here, but you get there. Here we go. This is a very case in point example of one of my problems with uh, generally Tomb Raider. We're gonna pull this lever. What did I do? It's, it's, it's so, so far away you would have to just notice that one, we got the mask, so I guess it's that, but also that switch revealed a platform in a previous chamber, a previous part of this, which uh, granted it's not, it's not very large, this, you know, these chambers, so there's only so many places you can really check. But if you swim down... Uh, no, we're not swimming down. We swim up. Yep, okay. We swim down. Um, we hit 2 hours 11 in the stream before I had the mental blank. Nice. Uh... I'm gonna pull the switch again, but I don't think this was what we need to pull. I've got the save at the um at the at the mask, so there's only so many things I can I can pay attention to, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the um I'm assuming that's that hatch closed off because I had uh gotten or pulled the other lever. That doesn't really look open though, does it? It looks like it's still closed. Yeah, it still looks closed, and I think all I've done is I've closed off the other passageway now. Well, we'll just double check. Oh, never mind, we've got two, well... Oh, there's a lever here. Again, what did that trigger? Who knows? Uh, what's in here? Nothing really cool. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've definitely enjoyed this one. I, I think as well, um, the timing is uh, very um, fun and coincidental that they are indeed releasing a, um, a HD remaster. It's not quite, but like effectively a, a, a port of uh, the first three Tomb Raider games plus the expansions. Very nice. Um, on... Uh, PC and all the other consoles um, in February. So I guess, yeah, if you've enjoyed watching any of this, please consider actually grabbing a copy of Tomb Raiders because uh, they've definitely been good fun and I would definitely recommend giving them a go. Uh, I'm not getting anywhere. That gate is still open. So I guess my leader doesn't automatically close. Um, there's probably something in here, I guess. I'm expecting something in here. After I pulled that lever, what was the thing I did? Uh, I don't suppose I pulled this to, to leave. I don't know, that just revealed the secret, like things and I just gotta like wheel my way out. Maybe that's what it is. Because if I go back 
and I just peer next to me with the other chambers Sorry. Oh my gosh. Never mind, Lara has uh, been sliced, diced, and thriced. Either that or someone's yelling at the screen right now going, Oh my gosh, you missed the obvious thing! I've, I always worry that whenever I play uh, any of these games. So I always worry that someone knows a lot more about where everything is than I do. And uh, that door is still closed. It is still closed. I've pulled every lever again, and it's not open anymore. So where do I make my ascent into? Out of here, because I don't want to be in here anymore. I know that this is like kind of crack on the wall, but uh, oh, I'm an idiot. I am such an idiot because also the door. Okay, that door ages ago would have opened this up then. So hold on, let's load. Let's make sure I didn't pull the lever. <sighs> I knew, I knew, I knew I'd missed it. Okay, so that lever is not pulled. Uh, the other lever, I guess, doesn't really matter because it's just permanently on, so it's fine. I'm gonna wheel all the way back, all the way back. And now I go down here, and now this gate is open. Uh, it's not open. I swear this would be an open... Oh, no. Maybe I need to pull this again, just for good measure. Okay, cool, 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 cool. This outputs you back here. So, okay. If we go through the top path... We've got uh, a bit of air. So we've got that, at least. Cool. Let's do another save just for just for good measure. Oh my gosh! I knew the water part would throw me off. Real talk. When people complain about the water dungeon in Ocarina of Time, in particular, it's like, bro, I feel like there's just a myriad of '90s games where the water area is just worse. And uh. This game's pretty up there, it's got a lot of stuff. This uh, dumps you out into this kind of tunnel. Sure, okay. Swim through a little bit. Swim a little bit. Swim up. And uh, a bit of, <laughs> bit of up. Um, but I, I do like the level design in this one. I, I, I think there's a lot of cool parts about it. And for the most part it's pretty alright. Pull this lever, we drop down into, uh, well the camera's already pointed, huh, what a wonderful floor grate, and a, and, and a gate here, wow. Let's pop the last, uh, the last mask onto the, the door, onto the, it's not a door, this finally turns off the light, I guess because everything's looking at it. This is how it works, right? It's still kind of coming in from the ceiling, but sure, okay. Uh, we drop down and we slide down to venture into the final level of the game. What a very ominous chamber. Who built a chamber like this anyway? Oh, I know exactly who. Never mind. <laughs> You should always trust someone that whenever they put things into pedestals, you hear voices from past cutscenes with a heavy reverb. Always trust scenarios like this. Also, always trust Lara falling onto her back in a cutscene. All this guy is affiliated with as well as that initial research party in um, India. Like he basically was like, hmm, let's just get the artifacts and convince this one person who managed to get one. And somehow works, so. Oh, in he goes. Ooh. <laughs> This is certainly the kind of being that I hope stays in your dreams. Ooh. 
We gotta end with some kind of weird monster, don't we? Um, I, freeze frame. Uh, so welcome to the final level, the meteorite cavern. Uh, this is actually the final level of the game, and this is our final boss. So, let's drop a save. And the way that you beat this guy is that you have to shoot him and run around this platform a bunch. Like, an actual bunch. It does, it does take a fair bit to run around here and shoot him. I shall showcase, you have to shoot him basically five times. As in, not like five bullets, but like, as in there are five phases of this fight. You'll see there's four pedestals around with uh, each of the meteorite fragments. You need to shoot him enough that he'll take, well, he'll fall over. And then you can grab one of the meteorite fragments. Do that four times, shoot him one last time, one fifth time, and he'll be down for the count. Very simple, and sort of a bit repetitive if you're just dealing with the pistols here. But I just want to highlight how long this thing takes when you don't have any other weapons. Because it sure takes a fair bit of time. I, th I, th I thought you'd like to know. It takes a while. Oh my goodness, okay. There we go. So I'm going to save now, because he's about to fall over. And uh, this is the part that kind of annoys me as well about this fight. He does not give you a lot of time to go around and run over to this. So if you miss, like if you're not standing in quite the right spot, uh, it's going to be a bit painful when you try to pick that up. So now, I've got a bunch of different weapons. Now, I don't really have grenade launcher ammo, but I do have rockets. And the rocket is good fun because it's built for this guy, basically. Uh, don't stand too close because he will eviscerate you and don't stand if you if he's up while you're trying to run to the um to the artifact or to the to the meteorite fragment he's gonna fire a laser and that laser basically one oh i might as well show the one hit laser while i'm at it um <laughs> that's why i save after the picking up the fragment so he goes down he gets back up fairly quickly Yep, there he goes. And so if you're standing in one of these, like, alleyways, he's just gonna wander around to you, and he's gonna immediately throw you this. Try dodging that, you can't. I was on full health. So, you're immediately dead. Health packs mean nothing in this fight. <laughs> they don't matter. Now see, this is what I mean about, like, missing it. It's a bit painful. Fortunately, though, I'm on the right side. Later in the fight, when you're not on the right side of him, it gets a bit mean. It gets a bit mean. So... Kind of annoyingly as well, you can't really use the MP5. Oh. You hear the sound, you are dead. This is a very cruel fight, and... Bonus points, shout out to everyone who has beaten this game on the PS1, because... I think this game is a, is a fine difficulty when you are quick saving. It feels very designed to, like, be able to, you know, checkpoint as often as you feel comfortable with. Yeah... Doing doing it with a with a fixed amount of saves feels relatively cool. In fact, as well, it's unlike some of the other games where there's just save points in the middle of a level. Uh, he takes four rockets, by the way. So uh usually you hit them, you don't really miss with the rockets. So, it's not that bad. Uh, I have 10 rockets, which means I can do about half this fight without it. Or, well, with it. Yeah, you should be able to get like two shots in, and then you can sprint around and try to figure out off, you know, mental note, where's the other bits. Oh! Actually missed one, okay. Okay, run, 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 run. Okay, the last piece is on my left, so... Okay, well that's all I get. That's all I can shoot him with. Um, I would also say though that like uh, another weapon that... Uh, like a deagle or the Uzis works really well, because... Actually, does the deagle work well? You need to be aiming at him. The pistols works well because- oh my gosh. The pistols work fairly well because Lara can turn, but uh...
He'd be, he'd be jumping. He'd be real jumpy. Oh, he, oh, wait, he jumped because he turned. About to get me on that one. You know what? I feel like the, the Uzis might actually be a decent shot here. If I can somehow turn around and see him. There you go. Alright, there's the crystal. There's the meteorite fragment right there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think the Uzis might be my f <laughs> the weapon of choice here. There you go. Okay, with all four meteorite uh, fragments in your inventory, the center meteorite actually starts descending and going down, and it means, I assume it's just depowering the meteorite. Which means he's now not invincible. He's not going to re-heal. Uh, so take him out one last time. Hopefully the Uzis do their job. Yeah, it's a bit easier with the Uzis, I guess. Good thing I saved them. There you go. He falls over and explodes into a showering degree of power-up. Or oh, power-up? Oh, particles. Oh my gosh, I can talk today. <laughs> Legit, I've been like muttering and slurring my words so much today, I swear. So thank you all for dealing with me. Uh, the game does not quite end there, though. Even though uh, there are... Are there any secrets? Nah, there's no secrets in this level. Um, you need to notice that this was a, uh, a ladder. I say that there need to be more lava in this game, or more volcanoes in this game, and there's some lava right there, so. Climb up here. Uh, only one of these, um, directions has a ladder, by the way, so you don't have to think that you're going the wrong way. But it is not really straightforward, like, it's a bit of a weird climb, and then you're gonna do this, and it's like, oh. Like, I guess that works. Um... This is, uh, I think, the ledge that you came from, but uh, like all good Tomb Raider finale, well, I say all good Tomb Raider finales, knowing full that Tomb Raider 2 didn't really have much of a finale after you took the dagger out of the dragon, which was also a lot quicker than this boss fight, mind you. This game's chock-a-block with boss fights. Um, okay, I swear this would have happened more, but uh, yeah, we'd we be climbing on the ceiling one last time, one last time for good measure. Climb on over to this ledge. There we go, drop down. We're almost out, you can see just that little bit of freedom. Up there, finally. I I love how, well, I guess the meteorite probably crashed into, you know, a hole somewhere, but it's like, man, we went a long way just to get back to the meteorite. Or rather, the lad went the long way. I don't. I, I just follow them, you know. Okay, we've got. Oh, I'm gonna turn the other way. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna hope that I'm aiming the right way for this jump. There we go. Climb up here, and we have finally made it to freedom. We are finally out of the meteorite cavern, and we're finally slide out into freedom. There we go. Walk out through this door. And, uh, yeah, uh, all these guys hate Lara. All of them. All of a sudden. I think it's not because I shot the one guy. It's because they legit hate Lara. So... We gotta give this MP5 a run for its money. <laughs> There's barely been a use because you have to stand still while you're using it. Oh. Oh. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, it's like, don't let that fire get me. go. Push button. I think there's another guy chilling in here. I hear him. Oh, I see him. Some of them might be dropping stuff, but I don't know. Just run through, shoot a bunch of dudes. It's a very interesting just like outro part here. Like you just, you just wander your way out. Rock up to the gate. 
This helicopter arrives. Very slowly. You gotta kind of wait for it to land. You like this, like, casual light? It kind of renders a bit weird with the fence alpha going on there. Anyway, jump through the gate. And we have officially completed the game. We're at the final cutscene. Where... Lara just point blank shoots a pilot. Bro, he was not even a threat. He was not even a threat. You're shooting their dogs. You're shooting their researchers. You shot the guards at London. You just shot a bunch of Area 51 feds. You know, like... I mean, I guess, you know... These guys were kind of kitted out. They got all these guns, they've got surface air missiles. Who puts surface air missiles in, in, you know, Antarctica? Got a bit of a helicopter gunfight going on. One that's definitely one you can control. Kablooey! Another, another person. Oh. <laughs> I probably killed like a thousand people. And here we go! The game is over. The weird line that's on the bottom right of the screen is just eternally there. Uh, but we're done. That's it. That's Tomb Raider 3. Almost. There's a bonus level I would like to give a go. So, if you manage to beat this whole game while, while getting almost, like very almost every single secret, and you got 59 secrets by the end of the game, the game would drop you into a bonus level, which effectively is an unfinished uh, level for the London section, um, which I think is fine that they didn't really include it as part of the main section, because it's like, the London levels are already as long as they are. But yeah, overall, no, I really enjoyed Tomb Raider 3. I did, I found it was actually pretty neat. Um, going back and really kind of soaking it in again. Thank you, picture. I, I love, I love that they've kept this picture in the game. And there we go. T 10 hours, 14, 23 secrets. That is not at all 59. So, uh, yeah, if you had all the secrets, pressing the button would go straight into the, the thing, but we don't. So we're going to have to rely on tombraiders.net, the best website in the world for finding out Tomb Raider, uh, walkthrough content. And uh, here we are, entering a level called All Hallows. This is what would you would be dropped into this level. Uh, now, I actually have the harpoon, because thank you, Stella, of that website for including, well, a butt-ton of weapons. Um, but this level doesn't actually really have that many enemies. If It's got like a couple, a couple of enemies, so uh, you don't have to really wor worry too much. Um, how this level would have probably been structured is that uh, you would have some at some point entered a church. But you can kind of tell that these ideas aren't really fully fleshed out. This is a very impromptu level. It looks pretty fine for the surface, but you'll just note that like where the level wants to take you, it's a bit... It's a bit... Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Also, um, you can see... Hold on. I Actually, can I hop down and really show that off? Because you could sort of see it right there. Um, the, like, the room underneath, right here. Oh, strange. You could see it from above. You could see it from above. Okay, I'll show it off when I, I saw it from above. But the room from underneath sort of clips up back into this room because it technically goes up higher. I think they were testing out that non-Euclidean level design and, uh, the, the clipping wasn't quite correct. Although in that case, I think they did like a teleport kind of motion, right? There's a lot of games that do that, where they do the teleport. But yeah, you can see. It's like, what's that? I'm pretty sure that, that red stuff there, that's 100% um, that's the room underneath coming through a little bit. So, how does this level work effectively? Uh, you've got to pull a variety of switches and eventually wander out of the, the, the building, the church, the All Hallows Cathedral. There's a couple of, uh, things that you can do in this level. Uh, there's no secrets, though, so there is that. Um, but it is just kind of neat as, like, a little bonusy kind of level. And ultimately, if you're going to say, hey, I played every Tomb Raider level, which, uh, currently has been the track record, then you got to play this one. You drop down off here, and then you get a bat jump scare. Very nice. 
Um, very weirdly, if you go in there, there'll be a save crystal, but then it's like, you kind of have to cop a bit of a fall to like, get out of here. So I just kind of wanted to show off that there's a, a bat jump scare, that was it. And obviously no secrets means no requirements to really do anything. Uh, yeah, these ledges, uh, there's a little bit less li rhyme and reason to them. You'll find that there's a ledge on my left that you can actually jump up to. Uh, maybe we can go up there right now. I think there is, like, shotgun shells or something? I'm guessing it's shotgun shells. I'll see if I've... No, it's Uzi. Uzi ammo. Okay. I think the signals in this level of, like, where particularly you need to go isn't quite the clearest. Although, you can definitely spot that there's, like, something to do in the center there. Um, but there's, like, a weird walkway that you can actually, like, kind of see here. I'm going to save in this empty slot. Um, nope. <laughs> there you go. I'll just jump down there. There we go. <laughs> there's, the, there's the floor po poking out again, as it always does. Um... There we go, a bit of a jump up here, where you'll find some flares. I guess we need more flares. And then, yeah, the camera sort of tried to indicate what you were meant to go, but uh, yeah, there's like a little ledge there that you can jump to. But the ceiling is not quite the right vector. And then it's weird, it looks like it's a walkway, but then... On the not slope sides, it's actually a, you know, a monkey bars, so... Drop down. And brace yourself for one of the worst things, which is Lara losing most of her health. They designed a level where Lara loses most of her health. Which means if you were taking damage from full damage earlier, good luck, you've, you've now died because the game just intended for you to die. Um, but fortunately, you probably have some health from somewhere else, from some earlier part. If you somehow got rid of uh, all your lives, hmm, okay. Uh, we've got a little platform over there you can spot. We need to safely descend from the ceiling. And, uh, I don't really know what's the best way to descend. I sort of just walk off here, and it seems to drop down into this little little ledge that we'll return to later. Um, I think if I pull this, you can see that there's a little ledge here, and we should be able to find a switch. Now, yeah, this whole room is all about switch after switch after switch, and, uh... So, okay, so we've opened up a, a door. I think that looked like it was on a ceiling. So, okay. And we need to find door on a ceiling. Um, there's like, yeah, there's a little ledge down there, which has health? Okay. Okay, mmm. It's either, mmm. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do a jump. There you go. A little bit of health. Very nice. Now we gotta somehow drop down to a safe ground. I think this is a safe jump. Ooh, ooh, a little bit too far. And then, I, like, there's a ladder? There's a ladder there? Thought that's interesting, but... I think this whole part of the structure is just here, just so you can come from this angle and climb into it like this. Um, so now we're standing up here. Uh... Let me try to figure out. I know you can go onto the floor, but I think you need to jump up onto this ledge. There you go. So now we're up on this ledge. There's a ledge over there. There's a... This part here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Eh. There we go. And I guess we're back up to where we started, but, uh, that's not where we needed to go, so, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm running through the laundry list of, like, mm, where was everything then? Kind of look like there's a... Okay, no, that's a gap in the ceiling that we need to go to. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, we'll drop down to the floor, we'll see what's going on. I think it's a safe drop, safe-ish. Uh, there's a door over here, but I know it's closed. So maybe there's just something on... Okay, door over there. And nothing around the rest of this. Okay, okay. 
I know you can also climb up here for a hot second because that's how you jump to the center platform. But we were on that platform already. We were already over here. So I guess instead of climbing up there, instead maybe... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Take a shot. I knew it would come up. I knew it would come up at some point. If you spotted it just then, good on you. You also know what <laughs> what I'm looking out for, but uh oh boy. What a ledge, what a what a You just gotta Hold on, like legit. That that is a very gutsy jump there. <laughs> but wait, hold on, we don't have a climbable walkway yet, because I haven't pulled it. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, hmm, <laughs> I know we, we opened something in a ceiling somewhere, over there might be useful, I think it actually might be over there, I think actually that might be where we need to go, so. Okay, cool, cool, I plotted out this level in my, in my brain, it's like which ledges are there, which ledges are not there, so back up over here, we should be able to do like a kind of weird, thank you music, thank you music, um, <laughs> we jump over onto this ledge, which allows Lara to climb over here, see some health, which you'll definitely need in a hot second, and a switch. This switch powers the door on the floor. One of the door on the floors. It rhymes as well, so you know it's important. Uh, happy 11-11 right now. <laughs> it's currently 11-11. I just wanted to mention that. Um, you sort of have to cop the fall. Hey, you didn't lose too much health, but you did have to cop the fall. So, there's that. Uh, it's not that door, it's the other door. How many, how many times... Someone's going to do like a door compilation. Alright, platforms, they break. Switch, they pull. And that one platform that I saw ages ago, finally it's there. Again, with the whole, you can't grab these on like, some slopes. Just because the texture's different, I, I get it, but like, it's interesting, so. Okay, so, from the floor to that climbable walkway again. We gotta, we gotta go back up. Uh, back up. Jump up. Jump up, jump up to get down. There we go. Turn around. Jump over to the far side. And we're almost back to where we are, so... Yeah, it's not as, um... Coherent as a, of a level. It's literally like, here's a big room and, uh... There's a bunch of, uh... Things you gotta pull. Interestingly, it reminds me of the, uh... The Nightmare in Vegas level. Of the, uh... The Tomb Raider 2... Um... Gold... Uh, golden mask like levels it really does remind me of that a little bit because it's got that like central structure in the middle that you climb up a bit um, that level was a bit weird though because most of it was kind of optional whereas at least with this one it's like there's a pattern there's a route that you're meant to be taking uh, there we go jump up here jump up here wait no 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 there's a ladder before we before we zip line out of here. Man, they've tucked they've tucked a, a ladder, a zip line, tucked them in quite close, haven't they? I love the ceiling. I don't know if it's meant to be the the sky, probably not. Uh, but it's important to come up here because you'll find a key. This key is very important for a hopeful point later in the level, which I'm really gonna hope there's a way to get back if you didn't manage to pick up this key. And it's sort of tucked away here as well, so if you just climb up here and then you think that the zipline is where you need to go, you know, rip. Rip, you've gone the wrong way. Uh, this one's kind of fun as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save here because I want to show off, uh, that at least, at least I've got some fun ideas in this level. We've got the zipline, which is good fun. If you take the zipline to its natural conclusion, you'll reach this slide, uh, which sort of, um, you know, Wrong lever crunks you out of the <laughs> out of the cathedral, and uh, yeah, you just die. You just die there, you know. So you're supposed to get off just a bit sooner, so you don't slide into the abyss. Like about here. The spikes indicate that you're meant to just 
completely ignore this ledge. Also, who oh. I'm on the spikes. Interesting. Uh, the, sp the spikes look like, you know, maybe there's something a bit more secretive over the- oh. I don't know why I tried twice knowing full well that it's a- it's a crawl space. So, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around and walk away. And, uh, that just activates the bookshelf. Just there. We crawl through. And then, uh, welcome to my nightmare, which is called... Uh... Hold on, you gotta, you gotta... Lean down. Welcome to my nightmare, which is called things that are just weirdly on fire for some reason. I don't know how to fully describe this room other than it's a room where things are weirdly on fire. Okay, again, again, you gotta do a forward jump to hit the ceiling. They really love their ceiling climbs in this level. Watch out, there's fire there, but that's okay. It's not gonna reach Lara. Unfortunately, this one does. You will just eternally get burned, and you're supposed to just spot that, yes, there is water there. The one time in Tomb Raider, you're intentionally meant to get set on fire because they'll extinguish you right there. Also, then there's these weird little crusher things that are gonna try and crush me. I just sort of can swim past them, no problem. Then there's an alarm, of course. Uh, just in this, you know, air duct inside the church. Very fun. Hit the button. This uh, activates something higher up. Uh, don't want to go up uh, in the other direction, but there is some small health here if you care about health at this point. Because again, how many enemies have we even seen in this level? There's no. There's, there's, there's barely any enemies. Crawl back a little bit because it was a real small space. Climb up the ladder. Witness the, the fun sounds of siren, fire, kathunking, and weird little, I guess it's cave noises. Um, with that button push and everything all good, you should be up here, but just uh, watch out that uh, you don't fall into the pit trap. Uh, this exits us. Um, weirdly high up a ledge. There we go. Actually, not even weirdly high up a ledge, it's actually where we need to be, I think, right here. So let me pull the, the save again, because uh, we're about to drop down a giant pit. And we fall down a giant pit. There we go. So, uh, down here, um, what have we got going on? Seaweed. Just remember, there were orcas earlier. And we're in a bit of a dimly lit room, but it's at this point, this point where you get screwed over if you didn't pick up that key. I love how I have three of the, um, of the, of the, uh, meteorite pieces. Oh, this one just doesn't exist. The Eye of Isis, was that the name of the meteorite piece? That doesn't seem like it. Okay. I don't recall that being the name of one of them. Um, alright, through this door we encounter- oh my gosh, health! I totally need it after all that's happened so far in this level. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like, yeah, overall I really have enjoyed this game. Um, I think I was probably harsher and less remembering of it before. Um, here's probably where they really wanted this level to go. They wanted to get into this kind of underwater crypt. So they got these, uh, mummified dudes. Oh, zombified to some degree. Swim around enough and you'll find this bit with actual lit fire. And that's right, uh, police guard? And a dog? I mean, this is a London level, so I guess the police guard makes sense. The dogs, I don't recall if we ever found any dogs in the London levels, but sure, okay. Um, and then spot that this is a ladder, as you can. Climb up. Through a little hatch in the ceiling. And... Behold... A little treasure room, which is actually, hilariously, the end of the level, the, the treasure room, so. 
that's the secret level it's not like too fancy it is just kind of like oh hey you know here's an unfinished idea here's a reward for getting every secret in the entire game which uh, no other tomb raider even goes near as a as a reward um but yeah no i've had a good time i've had a very good time playing this game i've uh, i've really enjoyed um you know exploring around really you know understanding these levels more and more and they feel smarter as i know more which is great um is it still tricky for a first time player maybe but I think this is weirdly a peak of Tomb Raider. I think uh, it gets a bit too ambitious in the next entry, and then a bit unambitious in basically every other entry afterwards. So um, I don't have a hard intention to play the other Tomb Raiders, but it's not it's not a, it's not never. It's just a, eventually. But um, I'll figure it out in my long busy schedule things. That being said, we still have to do uh, Tomb Raider three. Uh, the Lost Artifact, the properly released expansion to this game, which introduces six more levels, and that will be for a, uh, a future stream for next week. But until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed uh, the stream or any other part of the stream or part of the stream or no stream or I don't know, I'm just rambling, I'm, I'm muttering whatever, uh, please follow on Twitch. You get alerted that I stream every week. Uh, if you miss parts of this, you can probably see the VOD on YouTube in a few hours, uh, like 12 hours or so. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, you can also subscribe there so you get the, the notifications as well. Uh, I'm also on Pleroma. You can follow me at bndo at m.bndo.com. Uh, there's links everywhere. You'll find those links somewhere. Um, and uh, other than that, yeah, no, like, you know, feel, feel free to do whatever you want with these videos for the most part. Uh, make sure you use an ad blocker, I should keep mentioning that. Um, and uh, other than that, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late. Uh, play this game, this game was good fun. And uh, just, yeah, have a good time. Have a nice cozy December coming up. So with that, see you, I bid you adieu, farewell, farewell.